three, um, I would uh, like to welcome you all by especially those who come who are not part of our committee. Would you like to introduce yourselves and? Sure, Elise Burns. Elise. Good. Glad to have you join us. Hi, Nettie's here. Good. Wow. Look at you get your cowgirl hat with you. Stay dry too. Very good. Well, we're only missing one person, and that's uh, Sam Cunningham, who um, may yet show up. But um, as you may see, our agenda. Do you have a copy of the agenda, Kim? And at least Tim, you do. Okay. Good. Um, we normally have a roll call, but I've just sort of called the roll and that we have all of our members here. Heather. Here. And Janet. Here. And Nettie. Here. And Catherine. Here. And Mary. And Susan. And Stuart. Here. And Kevin. Hello. And Charlie. So uh, we're only missing one. We don't have any of our ex officio members here today, Lisa Schlosser or uh, Dick Byrne, who are commissioners, uh, but they may yet show up. Lisa said she was not going to be able to be we're expecting to have Evan Miller, who's a staff of the city, Dick's come. Key West. Isn't Dick in Key West at this point? Dick Byrne might be in Key West. Yeah. I don't know. It goes for two months around now. Oh, well. Oh. Okay. Good, Good luck. <laughs> Not today. I mean, very. I mean, this week. I mean, he goes real early, so uh -huh. maybe he's gone already. Maybe. Good. Well, um, Evan Miller is on the staff of the city, and he's going to be coming a little later to make a presentation, which is part of the agenda here. Um, so why don't we get started with the, the course of business here, which is approval of minutes. You all have gotten the minutes, I hope, from our December meeting. Do you want me to send those out after you and I review them with that, or is there a policy? Does he send them out, or do I send them out? Okay. That would be great, Catherine, if you could, as our secretary, send out a copy of the minutes once you and I have approved them. Okay. Uh, so that little people can have them. Oh, did you send them? Oh, no. Oh, okay. I, I sent them out electronically this go. morning. Thank oh, you. this morning. Gosh, I think I forgot to send them out electronically. Oh, okay. Oh, that's why I can't. But we yeah, got hard I, I, didn't, copies. I didn't see them, but mm -hmm. we got hard copies here this morning. And I know that was something I wanted to discuss with you that I forgot. Me too. So right. we're working the rough edges <laughs> off of how to be a highly professional group here. We've got extra copies of the minutes here. Does everybody have one of these? The minutes from last time? Oh, yeah. Yes. There you go. All you can eat. One of the French benefits. Yeah. No, I don't have it. No, they wouldn't. You wouldn't have had her. Yeah. 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 No. Extra copy for the minutes. Why don't you take a minute to look Just at the minutes from our December meeting? We decided how that's going to happen. Hot off the press. Yeah. Hot off the press. Very good. Oh, so you can get me. So uh, what did we do? We had some correspondence last time from Jennifer Duncan about electric golf carts and from Suzanne Good, uh, both live right around the corner from me, uh, who sent along uh, their information on topics they're interested in, electric golf carts and classic single use. Suzanne recommended a book. Uh, Catherine agreed to be our secretary. Um, we talked about the survey of uh, citizen opinions, very supportive of the environment. Um, we had topics of discussion. All one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of us under C talked about different things that we are interested in. Um, and then B, we talked about uh, with Evan Miller about um, some of the grant monies and the possibilities. E, we talked about educational programs. Um, what other cities are doing? Discussed involvement with hands-on projects. I don't think we went into that in depth. Um, does anybody have any other observations, comments, corrections on our minutes? Especially um, with what you're interested in, given that we didn't send that out ahead of time, if I missed anything, or Charlie and I missed anything. Okay, we'll um, assume that no one has any objection, hearing no objection. Uh, the minutes are approved. How about that for passing over any votes? Uh, you need to take a vote. Okay. Is there a motion to approve our minutes? I just say, can you just use consensus? No? Can't use consensus. 
All right. Well, let's have a. Is there a motion? I, I so move. And is there a second? I second. And all those in favor say aye. 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 And all those opposed say nay. The minutes are approved. Okay. Uh, next is our agenda is correspondence. As you can see, we got three uh, emails from uh, Joan Flaherty, Susan Gay, and uh, Suzanne Good. Um, the, uh, I think I brought along hard copies of those emails. Are they attached? Yes, they are. Here's the first one from Joan Flaherty talking about ban on plastic bags and uh, referencing a website called Reasons to be Cheerful, which I thought was kind of neat. Mm -hmm. uh, they, there are 127 countries around the world that have introduced regulations like bans or fees to cut down on use of, on uh, plastic uh, bags. And then Susan Gay on the next page, she's our uh, one of our city commissioners here, uh, sent an email to me. Uh, and as you can see, uh, she mentioned that um, Sally, that's Sally Foreman, who's head of the uh, SOLA 3, um, had packets of information about the same topic of plastic bans, single-use plastic that were handed out to the commissioners. Um, <clears throat> and um, SOLA 3, you may know, is a uh, organization of Save Our Lakes Alliance 3, which has conducted uh, uh, trash cleanups around the lakes, uh, and uh, they find there's lots of plastic, no kidding, really, <laughs> lots of plastic single-use stuff that they end up picking up. Uh, the same is true of the Rehoboth Beach Homeowners Association that was also part of the uh, commissioner's meeting where SOLA 3 and the Rehoboth Beach Homeowners Association appeared to recommend to the commissioners that there be something done on this topic. Uh, they have also sponsored beach cleanups along the boardwalk as opposed to at the lakes. Uh, but um, Jennifer Duncan is one of the leaders, I think, of the, uh, who has previously corresponded with us, of the Homeowners Association and their beach cleanup. In any event, there's that uh, communication there from Susan Gay expressing her interest. Um, and the third correspondence uh, was from Suzanne Good. And she's referencing some emails back and forth with uh, Catherine Bergwin and Janet Taylor Smith. And um, a book from the library. Referring the book from the library, How to Give Up Plastics. And what else was she was saying? about aluminum water bottles and such like. So are there any questions or thoughts or feedback on the correspondence that we've received? Yeah, I, I have a few thoughts. Um, first, there, there's a group um, here in Delaware called Coalition for Plastic Free Delaware um, that was behind the plastic bag legislation that we, we've had um, actually going into effect in 2021. Um, they give them like a, it's like a, a year and a half be from, before it goes into effect. But anyhow, this group, and they have a website, and they say they're open to um, doing events. I don't know if, if this group needs any of the education piece, but could be more directed to public awareness. Um, but they'll come and show either the movie Straws or another movie called Bag It, and then they'll um, but anyhow, my thought was if there's already this active group here in Delaware, um, Plastic Free Delaware group, um, we could get them to come and do, do their thing. Uh, and also, um, I looked at some of the what's going on to, in the country um, already with this stuff, and um, Nantucket um, has been kind of at the forefront, and they did it like a two, two parts. Um, first, they went to um, an ordinance where they, the businesses were not allowed to use plastic packaging. And they worked with their Chamber of Commerce to kind of get like um, centralized ordering and pricing for, de for compostable packaging. Um, and they, um, and then their second phase, which just passed, is the plastic bottle um, and a single use ban straws ban, um, which somehow fell through the cracks on the first one. But the, one of the things that I thought we need to do first is to, the refilling stations because um, the, Nantucket said that when they ban the plastic water bottles, they already have like 10 identifiable water refilling stations mm -hmm. in, this, in the city. And so we want to 
ban, if we wanted to take that step here in Rehoboth of a classic bottle ban, um, which would be a good one, um, we have to be able to point out um, where people can get water. And so I, I think that's something we should should go forward with. And um, and then, as you know, at the Green Drinks, you had that woman from Annapolis mm -hmm. talk about Annapolis. They're all volunteer. From what I understood, her program in Annapolis was more like encouraging businesses and showing them what they can do. And um, But if we have the, it seems like Sus Susan Gay is indicating there's a momentum that of taking a mandatory steps here in Rehoboth. And if, you know, if we got that going, maybe we could do more than Annapolis and uh, do like Nantucket and actually force businesses to use those compostable packaging. But um, so those, those were my thoughts. Okay. Anybody else? So Plastics Free Delaware was invited last year to our Earth Day event at Epworth. And we are inviting them again. Dee Durham came down. Yeah, Dee Durham. Yes. And she's excellent. So, yeah. um, a lot of it, good information. And we work in partnership with her a lot. So, mm -hmm. so you yeah. think we should try and do an event here in Rehoboth with them, or we could? Yeah, I mean, ours is in April. It's right around Earth Day. It's nineteenth of April. Um, well, if they're coming to Epworth, that's yeah. you know, you could you could um, maybe you could take it advertise it here, but sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, maybe it's too soon to do, but I wonder if we can right now even begin to coordinate with Dewey or Lewis so that there's a consistency of what we do because right. someone was telling me it's true. Washington does one thing, Baltimore does another. If there's a way in which we can have a consistency at least around our area of what we do, I think that would make a difference. It doesn't confuse people as much. Mm -hmm. Especially if we have a lot of tourists. Yeah. I don't know what's going on there. They don't even know whether they're in Dewey or Rehoboth. Or yeah. whatever. I'm just saying, as yeah. we talk, I know we got to worry about Rehoboth, but if we could begin early to talk with the others in our area, I think that would yeah. be helpful. I On think, that topic, I may I welcome and introduce Diane Hansen, who's from Dewey Beach. <laughs> Segway. Former Segway, yes. uh, top official, uh, you were vice mayor and mayor, is that right? Yes. Of, the, of Dewey Beach for a while, commissioner. And also representing here today, Sola Free. Yes. And anybody else you want to represent as well, Diane? No, <laughs> <laughs> not for now. Good. In which case, you have uh, asked to come and join us to talk about plastics, and we got yes. started here before you came in. Sorry. We, that's all right. You haven't missed much. So. Okay. Well, that's good. My apologies to everyone, but um, my husband was just diagnosed with dementia, and mm. um, oh, he totaled his car, and so we're going through that. We can't drive anymore phase, and so I had to take him up to the gym this morning, and I think he purposely puts us around, so I'm late, so then I'll let him get a car. But that's not going to happen. So, you know, we're kind of at that phase. So that's what oh, happened this morning. Sorry. Uh, it's quite a journey. Sorry yes. Yeah, it's a, a whole life here. So yes. you're here. We are adjusting. Well, yeah. uh, Diane, maybe you can help us uh, remember what happened at the last commissioners meeting, Rehoboth Beach commissioners, in which Sola Three and the Rehoboth Beach Homeowners Association presented packets of information to the commissioners. Do you want to summarize? Right. Um, well, two things they, they covered during that meeting. One was all the accomplishments that Sola has had over the years, which as a relatively board, new board member, I was amazing, amazed at how many things they have done that have helped the lakes. Um, and the other thing was they presented a whole packet on the whole concept of plastics and what they do when they get into our water. And I don't know if any of you have seen this article from Philadelphia, so they left the news journal. <laughs> well, but it says, is. blue crabs with the side of plastic. Right. Mm -hmm. Which basically says it all, you know. And they're just, they're that. researching it now, but they're saying that crabs and fish and that probably Do you want end to pass up that ingesting this. So now I can pass it around. Now what I, <laughs> we'll get it back to I, what I tried to do was get the link to this. And I called and they showed me how to do it. It's okay, now you click save. And I saved it, but then I went to open the document. There was nothing there. So I have to start over again. Foiled Welcome by computers. My life. Huh? Foiled by computers, eh? Yeah. yeah. So I'm still working on that. So I'm hoping to be able to send you all a, a link to this, but I was not able to do it this morning. So I'll pass it around. But it was in the news journal, and it was also in the Coast Press. The same title, same article, but just a little different layout. So I'll pass the one that way and pass one oh, this way. Yeah, they, they have found that microplastics are basically in everything yeah. at this point. Yeah. yeah. And we're ingesting them, we're breathing them, 
They're in our brain. I'm trying not to concentrate on that part, but it's true. So uh, they're everywhere. Right. And those plastic bags eventually do break down a little bit into little particles, and then the fish eat them thinking they're food, and they end up here inside us. Right. So it can't be good for us. We whatever. don't know yet the extent to which it's hurting our health, but it can't be good. No, well, that's what I they're saying. Think. They're researching it at this point. Yeah, and, exactly. You know, but, um, you know, it's not just crabs, it's fish, it's, it's everything. Anything. Everything. Right. Right. You name it, clams. Yep. And um, so, Diane, at the last commissioner's uh, meeting, you all made a recommendation, you, Sola, and Homeowners Association made a recommendation to the commissioners that they do what? Ban. Plastic, single-use plastics. Does that include yeah. clamshells that are made of styrofoam and, and cups that are made of styrofoam, or is it something beyond styrofoam? Well, at this the point, I think they said <coughs> plastics and styrofoam. What was the third? Wasn't there a third one? Well, that thing? Plastic, oh, so straws. Plastic straws. Plastic straws <laughs> have been frequently seen as something that's know. not essential and we could get rid of easily. Yes. The same may be true of plastic bags, which right. fly around in the air and get out into the ocean. Oh, yeah. Same with the straws that get washed into the ocean. Well, I'll tell and, you, after uh, Storm Sandy, uh -huh. Dewey Beach looked like a straw factory. Uh -huh. I mean, it was just because some of those places like the North Beach that are right on the water got ransacked, and they had all those plastic straws out, and they all ended up in the bay. Well, resort communities are particularly um, subject to that kind of yeah. usage in the summer. Sure, yeah, sure. And it was just at the... Wrong time where the bars were still open. It was in yeah. August. You know, if and it happened in winter, it wouldn't be a problem. Probably would be locked up. And the styrofoam is a particular problem, as I understand, because the styrofoam cups or clamshells or other products can easily be crushed, and then the little pieces of styrofoam easily fly away because they're so lightweight. Oh my uh, God, they're awful. The environment and they can't ocean. be recycled. Styrofoam can't be no, recycled. It's, really. No, it's just useless. Yeah. There are other ways to package things. All right. Um, so, I take my recycling to um, styrofoam, that is, uh, to Milford. There's somewhere that they have it. something. Now, what they do with it is another problem. I don't yeah. know what they do with it, but they oh, say they collect it. Oh, I didn't know you could even take it yes, anywhere. Yes, you can. Oh, wow. Is that our friend at um, yeah, yes. the other yeah, church? Yes, me that way, mm -hmm. yes. Well, uh, of those, there's, of course, of course, but there's a fourth category, which is the single-use plastic bottles, like water bottles, soda bottles, you can twist off the top and drink right. them, and a lot of people throw them in the trash. They have resistance or to that, though, I if guess. If we had a recycling bin, they would be thrown into the recycling bin, but a lot of people, I think, have come to the conclusion that just trying to encourage more people to recycle doesn't really get at no. the problem. No. What you want to really do is it encourage people to use reusable like water bottles. Yes, uh, I agree. Of course, that would probably get more pushback, I can imagine, from businesses who get. like to sell sodas and who like to sell water. And people like the convenience of it. But right. bottom line is we managed to live without it before, and I think people can manage again. Yes. You know, they yes. just have to. But education is going to be mm -hmm. part of the issue. And I'm astounded because I'm getting off changing the subject a little bit. But I was in charge of um, <clears throat> getting the trash program resolved in Dewey. And one of the main issues we wanted was weekly recycling, which the state law says only every other week. But we were able to get it. And it's fantastic that way. But I am astounded how uninformed people are on what is recyclable and what is not. And you think the trash companies would want to do this because when you when you get even one thing in that recycle bin, it can mess up the whole the whole bag. It's confusing. I mean, even it for is. even for me, and I'm I'm a recycling fanatic. Right. You right. Know? Me yeah. too. I yeah. mean I and every little thing and yeah. put it in there. No, I, I, no it's true. And then my husband comes along and throws coffee grounds. <laughs> it's like, no! <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> Do you know how much time I spend washing this? Anyway. The kind of thing that can lie awake at night. Yeah, and, and but I, I mean, think, but then think of all the tours we have, and every state has different yeah. things. So I think, you know, your group could do a lot in terms of education on what to recycle, how to recycle, and that would be very helpful. And I think, I think just the little things like that I've not paid much attention to, and I'm, I recycle and have for a long time, but just tops of things. And like a, uh, you know, like a container, just a cardboard container has a little piece of plastic that you pull off when you open it. A lot of things have this little yes. teeny thing that you pull off. 
that's not recyclable. No, it's not. And straws aren't recyclable. Right. And the mm -hmm. little cups, little all pieces. these little bitty things can't right. be recycled. Right. And, and they're plastic. Now the trash companies are doing very little to educate. Right. And in fact, some of them, I mentioned particularly waste management, um, from what I understand, don't really even recycle that stuff. I've that heard came from a lot of different sources that they, in winter, they just throw it all together and dump it out. You know, that came up in our last meeting, <clears throat> and that was something that we decided we really needed to verify yeah. um, because we don't really know what they do. And they right. may not do what you just said, but they may. Well, uh, a little uh, handed, and I caught yeah. them right handed. I took pictures. <laughs> Because they don't expect you. anyone to live there this time of year. And what's interesting, I, I saw them do it one week, and the next week I knew when they were coming. I s waited till they came, ran out with my video camera, and took a video of them dumping the trash and the recycling into the same truck. And then I forwarded it to who handles the waste. I don't remember what <clears throat> department. But I forwarded it to them. I think that's Dan Mack. Anyway, I must tell you, they did respond. And they said, now, when do they come and pick up this trash? And I said, usually on Mondays between such and such an hour. And wow. the following two weeks later, when they were coming to pick up the recycles, there was this black truck, <laughs> black car out there that sat there for hours in the middle of winter <laughs> and waited till that truck came. And after that truck came, they left. So they were, they were investigating it, and they find it. So they do, if you report it and you have evidence. They, they do follow very, up, which I was very, very pleased to see. So anyway, I got you all off the wrong subject here because I got to finish the whole plastic bag thing and get out of here and go pick my husband up at the gym again. So um, what else about the plastic bag thing? And then with the thing with the trash and the education is something I really would love your committee to work on. That it's definitely needed. If you just saw, I mean, people come by and there's a recycle bin and they'll throw dog poop in there. Mm -hmm. I said, do you mm -hmm. realize that's a recycle bin? Yeah. It's the most convenient can. I often they climb down inside my recycling <laughs> to pull those same dog poop bags out, <laughs> which means that I'm almost three quarters through yes. my little guy. I'm three quarters of the way in and my <laughs> yes. feet are hanging, dangling up in the air. I've done that too. And my neighbors will say, Charlie, what are you, you know, I'm looking yeah. for dog poop. Yeah. Well, you know, I, when I was, I was reading this 17 year old recycling report, though, mm -hmm. um, and they did an investigation of uh, in Rehoboth, of re the recycling pilot, and they said overall compliance is not bad if you carefully mark them That's good. and um, and use the right kind of tops. So it's not as maybe not as as discouraging as you might think as far as what your average what person's do you mean by going tops? to do. Use the right kind of tops. Um, they, you put smaller openings so that you can only put. Cans or bottles. Oh, or I see. With yeah. the tops of the yeah. container, yeah. big can you? Yeah, yeah. There was actually the tops of the bottles. Apparently, the city did a pilot program <clears throat> like 17 years ago. Um, they got some grants to, for recycling, mm -hmm. um, and it, it's funny because it starts out by saying that they discovered that people were doing a really good job on the beach, but the ones on the boardwalk were really contaminated, and they hired an investigator to just study why why is why are people behaving differently on the beach versus the boardwalk? And then come to find out the city didn't put the stickers on the ones on the boardwalk and misplaced the, um, the stickers that's, that tell people what to do. And so it really wasn't, a, it was like a user fail. And so they said when they went and put the clear, you know, identify recycling only and put the stickers on, it was like pretty good, pretty good. That's amazing. So, isn't that amazing? Yes. Because last month, I guess our commissioner said, oh, it failed because people were throwing like pizza boxes in the recycling and whatnot. Yeah. And why are they doing that? Well, it was, they didn't mark them, so it was confusing. So I think most, they education said, least, again, in this report, they said the majority of people will do the right thing if it's easy to understand mm -hmm. and, and not, you know, I mean, of course, there's going to be a certain level of, of contamination but it, mm. and, and again I, you know it's better to go with um, reducing the, the waste but uh, that doesn't mean we shouldn't still I, I know there's talk we're going to try and recycle again but I, I don't know where we are with that either. You know I could report to you on that Stan Mills former commissioner here at Rehoboth Beach has for a long time been interested in 
uh, recycling on the beach and boardwalk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, he's traveled up into New Jersey to see what they do up there and there's pictures. He's got oodles and oodles of slides if you have enough time to oh, look yeah. at them all. Oh, yeah. uh, what a guy Stan is. Uh, yes. He is eager to move ahead. We're talking about these same issues with the uh, Sharon Lynn, our uh, city manager and staff, about uh, making that happen this summer, that we would have boardwalk, but not beach. We'll just start off with the boardwalk part of things, because I think it's a little easier. You know, they have the little hut, hut yeah. trucks that yeah. come along with the trailer behind, and they now pull out the trash and plastic bag and just throw it in the back end of that trailer, and they can take care of it pretty easily that way. I think it's a little more difficult on the sand. Susan, did you have a thought? Well, I just saw an article recently about a beach that puts baskets, a list of them. They stack baskets every once in a while along the boardwalk and tell people, if you see things on the beach or you see things on the boardwalk, whatever, put them in the bag and then explain what to do with them. And they're having a lot of good luck mm -hmm. and asking that you put those baskets, you know, there's places where you put them. But you empty them, and then you put, but, it, but even if it's just a, whether people use them or not, the fact they're there is a way of telling people, yes, we need to pay attention to if what's on our beach and what's on our boardwalk. Yeah. If you have seen other people littering, please pick it up and put yeah. it in this basket you, and bring you know, it back to the trash can. Paper <laughs> or on top of a bottle, you huh. see it on the, in yeah. the, and it may not get picked up with a machine or whatever, but it's also a way to people say, listen, we're all in it together to help. Yes. Here are some baskets. Use them. Well, this summer, as I understand, plans are afoot uh, to have uh, clear plastic bags put in the recycling bins uh, so that when you pull them out, people can take a look and quickly see whether or not it's got contamination in there. And oh, uh, if it isn't bad. too bad, the staff may reach in, grab it, pull that out, put it over in the trash can so that you've got a cleaner uh, recyclables there in the clear plastic. Um, in are those clear plastic bags recycled? Can they be That's recycled? That's the other oh, problem. Yeah. That they told me the plastic should not end up in the recycle no. bin. Yeah, why not? You know, in other words, your recycling bin that you have at home, you should not put it in a plastic bag. I mean, the grocery, no. you know, grocery stores, supposedly, again, I don't know, because I've not followed it, but supposedly recycle plastic bags. And I've done a little bit of Google research about plastic bags because it concerns me putting this recycling in plastic bags. And my husband and I have these biodegradable PSM, I think it's a starch based, uh, what you put your garbage in. But I did some Googling with that and it is starch based and maybe cornstarch and it's corn that's taking over lots of fields and you know, we, we overdo corn. So it, I, I think the research is still out there as far as different kinds of holders for this. And they're saying that it's mixed with some other plastics and those plastics might be, when they break down, might be even more dangerous, more toxic than plastic bags, which takes them 100 years to break down. These break down in three or four months but they may make little microplastics. So I think the research is mm. not complete about all this biodegradable and compostable one. No. It's, it's so, just, it yeah. is still out there. I mean, all the stuff I've read. Well, supposedly anything that is recyclable should be clean, should be rinsed, should not need a bag, supposedly. And if your can needs to rinse out, just rinse it out. You're not really supposed to just put them free the way they are. Because they're not supposed to have food scraps or anything else. You're supposed to be dumping it, technically. Yeah, but and if we're doing it on the boardwalk. I, I understand. Mm. <laughs> I know. Nobody's well, going to rinse again. out their soda bottle, are they? They're just gonna <laughs> no, they're not. Recycling bin. No, yeah, they're, they're not. Yeah, yeah, and then I always think about the, the water that you're using to, you know, and I get I all know. wound up about what's best, but. I know. <laughs> My mother used to get all upset about that because she yeah. lived in Arizona where water yeah. is just, well, you're just trading one resource for another. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's a so, tough yeah. one. Washing your, yeah, but I wonder about the bars. I mean, you know they don't rinse any of those bottles out. They're too busy. You know, I, I just wish out. we could yeah. pour the stuff from whatever the recycling is, and I know this is a pipe dream, into the stream recycling and then reusing it rather than taking the bag. 
I, I think it'd be admirable. I think the pushback we might receive is those bi plastic bags, the clear plastic bags that have the recyclables in it, are probably full of icky, sticky soda or something, making yeah. it yeah. more undesirable for the staff. That's right. And yeah. we have to recognize there's going to be a cost <coughs> in uh, yeah. hiring more staff in order to handle the two separated streams. It may not be a lot because you know you've already got one or two guys or people. Uh, driving along the boardwalk already to pick the trash. Now they're just picking up two bags, and it maybe is not going to be that much more. But the more difficult we make it for the staff, the, the less more likely, likely it is to happen. Right. The staff may get disgruntled and they'll just say, ah, I'm there. Yeah, they're what they're doing, Dewey. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, Dewey in. Beach has a pretty good boardwalk or beach recycling program. Is that yeah. right, Diane? Mm -hmm. it, we, ours is outsourced. Meaning outsourced. What? Um, the person who has the contract for the concessions on the beach, also part of their contract is to pick up the trash. Wow. Oh. So they, they bring it to sell it, make wow. profit, and then they have to get rid of it too. I like right. that. Right. That's, that's nice. So they, we've recycled for years on the beach. That's great. Well, yeah. um, maybe we can end up doing as well as you all have done in yeah. Dewey. Learn from your <laughs> lessons. Uh, yes. We want to keep on capping your knowledge if we can. Can I ask though again? The Sola 3 Rehoboth Beach Homeowners Association proposal you made to the commissioners, did it include styrofoam, straws, and plastic bags? Yes. But did it not include the single-use plastic soda bo bottles that you're doing? Right. Because I don't think it did. Although they said single-use plastics, it would include that. That's sure. the thing. Right. So, but I think in order to, to get this passed, we have to consider that there'll be a lot of pushback with the bottles. From the vendors who want to continue to sell them. And the now. people that use them. I right. mean, it's very convenient. They're lightweight, you know, as opposed to carrying glass bottles. You don't want glass bottles on the beach. Well, what do you, what do, you do? Boat. You know, how do you take well, things down? In Nantucket, um, they're not allowed to sell um, the bottles, but oh. they, but people are still allowed to bring their own from where or out outside right. of the, the city. Mm -hmm. But the only thing they were found they could regulate was the vendors that are located with, within, well, that's still pretty huge. And yeah. um, <clears throat> so it's interesting and it's pretty aggressive. I don't, I guess people are worried that whether we would have pushback, but um, we can recommend it and yeah. see what the commission does. That's not bad. I mean, I, yeah. I was just reading this thing from Joan that said that um, the article about banning plastic bags, 127 countries have introduced regulation that bans and, and fees like bans and fees to cut down on single-use plastic bags. That was just the bags, but I would 127 also, countries. I also push the businesses to, like, how much do those water bottles call it cost mm -hmm. at Edward? Three dollars, did you say? Which buy? ones? The, the ones that the reusable ones? ones? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the water bottles. They cost oh, at Cross for us, four fifty, and we sell them for. I just wonder if you could get you let the bigger ones like grow yeah. them like that yes. to have one of those with their name on it so they get advertisement right. absolutely absolutely but it still yeah. gets something mm -hmm. that can they and so when they can go in with it they can refill it but they get an advertisement because their name is on it and i just wonder if we mm. can work with the businesses in town to, and i think some would do that and knowing that they're doing it for a, a good reason some people will therefore follow up on it and pay for it and, mm -hmm. and some, anyways some people already do that yeah, yeah. i mean rise up is selling their own, uh, at, maybe they haven't quite gotten to that, but they also give a quarter discount for mm -hmm. when you get... It's another way? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you get coffee with a refillable. They'll even wash it for you. Uh, and I was thinking the advertisement wow. might help. Yeah, that's a good idea, Susan. I would report to you that I had a conversation with Bob of Bob's Coffee Mill on his own Rehoboth Beach. Oh, yeah. That yeah. little uh, alley that goes back in there. And he's reported he's been in business for decades, and he's always had paper straws. So there are readily available alternatives to plastic straws. It's not like we're asking people to do something right. that nobody right. can do and still make a profit. And he's had paper cups instead of styrofoam cups. He's had, you know, doesn't use plastic bags. Uh, some places, as you might note in that email, have had a fee on the plastic bags rather than banning so the plastic way. bags, and that's been pretty effective, I'm told. Yeah, no. you know, well, I'll tell you, I w when I was in Europe, I bought some flowers, and the guy said, well, did you want a plastic bag? And I said, well, yeah, because I had to carry them, you know. And they were only $10, and I gave him, well, 10 pounds or whatever, and I gave him 10 pounds, and he said, well, I'll be another 50 
whatever, whenever it was. Mm -hmm. And so they, they charge like 50 cents, you put them in 50 cents for a plastic bag. Wow. At the time. Yeah. And did you tell them to forget about the plastic bag? I'll just well, no, by then, by then I'd over, I didn't even <laughs> understand what was going, it was later, I was like, why do you pay that 50 cents? And then I realized what it was. It said plastic bag right on the receipt. It's an incentive it's like, oh. to not have to do that, right? <laughs> So that's what, that's I think good. in Montgomery County, Maryland, they charge ten cents on your grocery bill per bag if you if you use them. But yeah. but here in Delaware, in twenty twenty one, our law is going into effect of um, supermarket. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I thought it was this year. I, I was. Know. Like, I thought, no. Yeah, I was hoping no, it was this year. No, no. Yeah. Twenty twenty one. One more year. They gave them a lot of time to get. They sure did. A lot of plastic bags. And not a not a lot of places gave them that much time, but we did. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Sometimes you make concessions to get things through. Right. It was, you know, there were a lot, a lot of politics involved in getting yeah. that bill through. But well, let me say one other item of interest to the general public here. I think our, meet, our full meeting, which is that we had a uh, rump group, a smaller group of us who were interested in plastic single-use efforts. Mm -hmm. uh, we met at Rise Up. Uh, we did not have a quorum of all of us here, so we did not have to abide by the open meetings laws, which. We suggest that if you have a quorum of your people meeting, you have to have notice seven days in advance and all the other uh, formalities like we're doing today. Uh, but since we had fewer than that, we just had coffee or whatever at Rise Up. And uh, let's see, who was there? Catherine, you were there. And uh, again, Janet was there. And uh, you were there, Kevin. And anybody else was there? I don't think so. I don't even Susan, know about it. Was it advertised? Was it uh, well, no, I don't think it was advertised. I think I sent it out to... That was really what Susan Gay had requested. Right. Susan Gay, get, Mark yeah. Minister, had asked that mm -hmm. we get together. So we yeah. said, sure, why sure. not? And you came, Let's Diane. see what you guys are up to. And uh, mm -hmm. Matt Saunders from the Hoboken Beach Homeowners Association mm -hmm. was also there. Yes, that's right. We had seven of us, I think. Yeah. And so I uh, want to make sure that those who are interested in plastic get included in on any team efforts, mm -hmm. not full committee meetings, but team efforts like that. Uh, Susan, you probably want to be part of the plastic team. Yeah. It's okay. I just was wondering that I missed something I should have. Yeah. That's all. Well, well, I just no. want to say, Charlie, that yeah. I am interested um, in plastic, though. When you asked last time for people to say they're interested, you said mm -hmm. two things. Well, I know. You may have four things you're interested but, in. But, like, I'm interested in all of it, but I, I so just because I didn't say right. plastics as one of my things didn't, didn't mean that I'm not, because I am, but. Um, yeah, and by the time you got to me, everything was, I, yeah. all the ideas were out there almost. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You were the I just batter. said I agree with most of you. As a cleanup batter, the yeah, right. on the committee. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have uh, such a large group, you might want to divide up and yeah. assign some people to plastics and some people That's probably <laughs> something else. Do. Divide mm -hmm. and conquer, as they say. Well, uh, my apologies for not having invited everybody who was interested, but I wanted to be oh, cognizant of our uh, open meetings yeah. efforts. Um, those who were there, did you want to tell us uh, briefly about what we took away from that meeting with Sola 3 and the Homeowners Association and the oh, Straw Everyone committee? there seemed to really promote the um, idea that we as a township of Rehoboth can certainly uh, promote the um, reducing the single-use plastic. Everybody seemed on board with it, which was fantastic to hear. Um, I know it's been a thing of mine for a long time. Um, and just put it out there. You know, it's just suggested. We're making suggestions as a committee. For us, we can suggest they do it. And again, we can see where it goes from there. It seems like we have a lot of support out in the community, which was really good to know. I, I didn't know. I know that businesses may be a little, but if we... Education, like you said, giving them alternatives, finding out different ways to, to combat the problem, I, I think would be an excellent thing to do. And I, I was very encouraged that, you know, I know we're going to hit our speed bumps and our roundness or barriers, but it doesn't hurt to go out there with and just say we want to really reduce single-use plastics. And well, let's see where we go with it. I think we're at a point where we should decide, do we want to actually recommend a a ban or a, a legend uh, ordinance sure. or are we going to recommend this education encouragement like or which, what direction there's a third option the fee on that the fee on things yeah. yeah so i think we we probably could come up with uh, you know how strong do we do we want to go forward with it at this point oh why not let's do it. let me call on you if i made it see if you had some takeaways from the meeting well, we had at rise up one thing that came to mind was that uh, wawa and royal farms those type of places are not going to be included. Right. Yeah. And 
the state law. The well, state but they law. could be in the local, yeah. I would like to see them included. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would too. <coughs> Definitely. Yeah. Now, as far as what the city of Rehoboth can do, we can't regulate the Wawa out on Route 1, but Correct. we could do the Royal, get the Royal Farms. We have one Royal Farms, right? Yeah. Is there? No, there's no stores. But that would be good. Yeah, you can go into those stores and just not take them. It's going to be, uh, it'll be interesting to see what our solicitor says as far as what we can do, with, you know, that, that yeah. require more than what the state law, but maybe we can. But one thing that came out of the meeting, right, when we were talking about Wawa in particular, for Royal Farms, was that Wawa was saying that they were a restaurant, and that's how yeah. they were that's going how to be they excluded. Did it. Yeah. But the word that I heard was that's probably going to be challenged yeah. because they're not a restaurant is where you sit down and you eat, and you don't do that at Wawa. So it doesn't know whether or not that's going to be exclusion or not. That's what they're claiming, they're a restaurant. Yeah, next they'll be putting a table outside. And right. Some of them do. <laughs> Actually, there's a Wawa up in Wilmington with tables and, and well, chairs. So. Yeah. So that was uh, like, could be. A question if you did consider a ban for Rehoboth, does that only include um, food stores, like grocery stores, or are you going to include restaurants? Because I think takeout food is one of the biggest sources yeah, that we have. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what we so should, that that's, that's what we need to work on. Do we want to? We should look at what some other places have done and decide what we want to include. I, I, there's probably way less grocery bags going out with groceries in them than with food. Like mm -hmm. you got the bag and then you've got the clamshell inside mm -hmm. and the straw, you know, the whole yeah. ensemble oh, yeah. for taking And that could easily be switched to a paper bag. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to do legislation, then if you're yeah. going to go that far, I say go for the whole thing. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, agree. Yeah. I tell you, whenever I go into a place that does use paper, I always say I'm really glad to see yeah. them using Always thank them. Say thank you. Yeah. So, so what, do you have a comment? The, the biggest source of, of these plastic bags is Royal Farms and Wawa. Is what? Yeah, is yeah. Royal Farms and Wawa. Yeah. Really? I mean, I, as I said last meeting, I spoke yeah. with the manager of this one, the one here at Royal Farms, and he said, and he used to manage the one in Long Neck. This one, which is a low volume Royal Farms here, I've got one just outside our city, 6,000 bags a week. 6,000 bags a week. And he says in Long Neck, they're eight to 10,000 a week. So you take all the wild wilds and royal farms, <clears throat> all the plastic that's in our highways and in our farmlands, and we've all seen them, the farmers plowing their fields recently. You know what they're doing? Plowing they're plowing plastic. the plastic under. And I know, I think Janet said or something, there are microplastics in our food. They did a research, because in my background, they did research on all the salt, because the salt comes from the ocean, and a lot of it does. 90% of all the tests they did on all the salts, 90% of them have microplastics. So why is it that we have a huge rise in plastics and at the same time a huge rise in dementia, autism, and cancers? Scientists have all debunked it. It's, it's a done deal. It's linked. It's just that big pharmaceutical is going to try to keep this under, under the weather. Mm -hmm. because obvious reasons, but it is, there is some scientific proof to this fact. So in my, in my email to you this morning, I mean, I think we need to go all the way. I think that needs to be a ban on single-use plastics. Are you referring to this uh, document? Did you all see this one? In, in specifically the bottle. I mean, you can start with the bottle because it's such low-hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. Everyone in the world is talking about it. Greta, everyone. Yes. It's yes. polluting our oceans. It's polluting our highways. It's polluting our farmlands. And it's filling our landfills. Because mm -hmm. nobody, none of the mm -hmm. other countries aren't taking it. So we have to take into account the stakeholders, find them, collaborate with them, include them, because we want to hear all the parts to it. Mm -hmm. And you've got to, we have to market and patronize those that embrace this. You know, you can, the ones that are negative, and they're going to be there, as yeah, you said, there's going to be people. But there will not be very long when you take all the people that are doing what Rise Up is and all the others, and, and you start promoting them, and they said, how do I get it? You start promoting them and patronizing them and say how many people are patronizing. Guess what? I was a business owner. I pay attention to that stuff. How do I get it? You're saying to yourself, well, how do I get that? <coughs> and the education part, which we've been talking about, I was just walking yesterday down the boardwalk. There's about 24 water stations already on the boardwalk. There's 24. 
So if you put filtered water stations like Epworth has, like San Francisco, I was in San Francisco when the whole state banned all this stuff. And when you put water stations there and allow different businesses or people or thing, entities to sponsor each station, mm -hmm. schools, schools, everything, guess what? Then the cost goes down. The water thing is already there and you use a filtered water to take the heavy metals and the chlorine out. All of a sudden, nobody's going to want to drink bottled water because even though the convenience, we are a the basic concept that I think we need to allow. We are lazy. Yeah. Yeah. We are lazy yeah. and yeah. we love convenience. Yeah. That's and you, that's why we're going to get the pushback. Mm -hmm. I hate to say it, we've got to give up the laziness because yeah. we, the only people, the, re the reason people come to Rehoboth is because of the ocean. Yeah. They're not going to come to Rehoboth if, right. if our ocean looks like Tulum, right. Mexico and all these cities you see on the thing. They're not going to, we lose our allure. So I don't think we have till 2021 to wait for a ban. Um, no. You have to have a win-win for, for the environment and for the, and there has to be a, a collaboration with the towns, uh, engaging the neighboring towns, Lewis, Dewey, Bethany, Fenwick. This helps to build local critical mass. Because the problem isn't the 1,500 residents that live here. Sure, sure. The problem is the 500,000 that come in here. You can, and you just all been talking about, well, I can't figure this out. I can't figure that out. Yesterday, I was at the recycling center in, just in, in Long Neck. Oh. It's not the same sign as what the Gazette has for us to do it in so our home. Consistency the sign is, is not the same. It didn't even close. And you got to, everyone sitting there, I saw people pulling in as I was, trying to figure out which care I could put it. Oh, I can't put this anywhere. Well, and where can you put this? And then the house thing that the Gazette came out with, which is different, that's a different one. And then if you're a senior and you've got eyesight, like some of us do, and you tried to read the number five or the two or the three or what's on oh, the Oh, it's impossible Good sometimes. luck. Yeah. So eliminate all that. Well, that, a lot of people don't even know what's about the one, two, three. They, exactly. They oh, let's eliminate that. Eliminate all that and ban the plastics totally. Now, the, the businesses have to win at this. The businesses win. They get to sell these. Mm -hmm. exactly. They get to sell these and make revenue. Um, same thing with the plastic bags. You know, in Maryland, I was in Maryland when that all happened. I was in California when they just did it. They just said, it's going away, and you pay for the paper bags. And what happened is everybody gets used to buying a bag, which you could hear again. There's another marketing thing. Get bags with all kinds of wonderful, wonderful marketing sayings on them. And let the businesses make some revenue. The businesses need to succeed in Rehoboth Beach. The mom and pop is, you, we do not want in my opinion, we do not want a town of Royal Farms and Wawa's and fast food things. You want the mom and pop businesses and you want them to succeed and, and, and be successful. That's why they need to be their stakeholders, their partners, bring them in and let's, and let's all rock and roll. But this, we don't have the time. I mean, I don't, I don't think we do. the yeah. problem is the time is already gone. Yes, yeah, and I know. Even these little towns, these seven towns, that still builds local critical mass because we all go back and forth to Bethany or to Lewis or whatever, but we have got to get Sussex County on board because it's you go inland sure. and this place is a trash can and it's embarrassing. It's a trash can and it's being plowed into the soil and for the corn and soy that's being grown and fed to our animals, they're all being fed plastics. And we are getting cancer and autism and dementia. The other thing is those bottles that water comes in. <laughs> yes. You could sit in a hot truck in summer for hours and hours and all that plastic is leaching, leaching into the water right that you yep. thought well, was so pure. The problem yeah. is and some of the water they put in it is just tap water anyway. <laughs> Diane, there is no the regulation of water bottle water. No. Zero. No. True. So you yep. have the, the bottle That's situation true. with the BPH thing. What is the water? Mm -hmm. um, here again. It's you, come out of the tap of the Pepsi company. We can yeah. filter our own. I filter my, I just moved and I've, so I've got a whole house water filter with like six stages of filtration. Yeah. I have to because my wife is mm -hmm. for uh, stability. But you can do this and make this thing, but it's got to happen. We got we to gotta, we gotta go. And this is, and the reason is there's critical mass all over the world. You're, you're, you can't see a day world, CNN or MSNBC, where you don't see an article. So Let's ride that wave, take advantage of it right now, and, and just start yeah. doing it. Well, we something. already have a commissioner asking us for something. So. Yeah. yeah, so we got we to gotta go. Go for it. I think, for the, I think we need both a very, very strong band, but we need education, and we need, like you're saying, Stuart, we need 
for mom and pops and for businesses to be able to brag and to tell what they're doing about the environment, like Bob, you know, who happens to be my neighbor at the coffee place. And Starbucks, by the way, also will give you coffee in a ceramic cup that they will wash out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 a lot of coffee. And, so and mud slingers. And, well, and, and so, so, paper and so I think we need both the switch and the praise. Mm -hmm. And I think we need a sticker that we can put on a business, you know, that we need to decide what it is that warrants that sticker, you know, that warrants that praise from the Rehoboth City yeah. Council. Has you know? anyone come across any um, organizations in other towns that uh, I've heard it said as providing incentive instead of regulations, where there's some type of an organization, maybe it's, you know, Green Rehoboth or something, that the businesses can apply to be a member of. Yeah. And then there's that platform is advertised on social media. So maybe you, maybe even <coughs> town of Rehoboth has it uh, linked to their website somehow. So the businesses, by agreeing to conform to these standards voluntarily, are a member of this organization. And then they receive promotion based on other people coming to the site right. or however we can. Yeah, that's a mark, that's some a type marketing. of social media. That's a marketing thing, and it's got to be on every hotel and motel website, uh, yeah. the, Hobbit, the, yeah. the chamber websites, well, everything in the business what, bureau. It's got to be anybody, on all of Do you guys know of link, anything? I had sent a link to everybody after our last meeting about the Green Star. I don't know. Yeah. I Green Star. I'll resend yeah. it again. It made it to the to the notes. I'm pretty sure. Yes. The yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can send it again. Star. Yeah, I'll send it to you again. It's on um, your notes from what last meeting. What is it? Uh, it is a, a program of getting people on board, on, and townships on board, and cities on board. And uh, it, the qualifications, they have to meet certain levels of different things, and it's all broken down into pieces, what's easily achievable, yeah. start with this, yeah. move to that, and they get stickers, and they get, you know, as when the status. And if you're the status, you need to certain things. And it's uh, just a way of what you're saying, of encouraging people and and if you meet this status, that's a great yeah. promotion. Maybe a progressive. You know, we hope it's right. You know, you're three. a one, two, or three. Yes, you yes. Know, you're so a superstar. Honestly, the, the Rita Coalition, those, those kids are coming, mm -hmm. and they care. And they would come into a town like this, look it up to see which businesses are eco-friendly, and they would visit those businesses. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. a real thing that's going to start it happening. It is a real so. Send it back out. Yeah. 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 But yeah. I think we just have to be on some platform that they can all find. But I think maybe the low low-lying fruit like water bottles and plastic bags, I think right away, ban, period. Well, well, we, I can include our committee discussion on this topic because we spent almost an hour on this. Yeah, <laughs> i got to get going anyway. Have, so. You have to get going. We yeah. have a guest who wants to make a presentation as well, uh, Evan Miller. But before you leave, Diane, yeah. if there are any other further recommendations or comments or thoughts you have for us, uh, we'd be glad to No, hear. I think you're off to a good start. Okay. Um, you know, I think with the mass of people you have here, you should be able to help. I think what you need to do is get out and talk to the businesses, though, you know, and find out what their yeah. needs are and their thoughts are. And also, to Diane, they're going to be the ones that will fight it mostly. Uh, Diane, we'll be thinking of you with your husband. I'm sorry? We'll be thinking, thinking about you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's a challenge. So. We welcome you to come to our next meeting, which will be the first Friday of the month of February, which is February 7. So it's always going to be the first Friday of the month. That's our hope. Now, this mm -hmm. coming first Friday of February, there is some other group that had this room reserved at 11 o'clock, so I agreed to have our meeting at 1 o'clock. I hope that that's all right with those of us who can adjust your schedule. And we'll hopefully be having Dee Durham, who's a president of the statewide Delaware, Plastics Free Delaware group or coalition or whatever it is. And maybe she can answer some of your questions, Heather. Oh, you've whether. already asked Dee mm -hmm. Durham to come to the next I've one? I've been endeavoring to ask her to come. If she, if she's oh. in Wilmington, I said if she can't come in person. So she's I now a county council member in Newcastle yeah, County. For Newcastle mm -hmm. County Commissioner. Yeah. And so she's, her time is valuable. And she may want to come by Skype or, or uh, Zoom or something uh, instead of here being here in person. But we'd love to have you join us since you're close by. That's it. Well, it looks like they're off to a good start. Thanks for your understanding. So I'm going to take this and I'll try to send out the link. <laughs> Thank you. We'll okay. share the link. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Uh, may we move ahead to hear from Evan Miller, who's here facing. Have one quick oh. question before we move yes. off of this, because I or is this where we are on five? Well, the five of the respondents, we've talked about that, but go ahead. Oh. What were you going to ask? Well, I just don't understand that with the FOIA stuff and all that. So if anybody in the committee writes you an email, is that going to be put in 
for everyone to like, how does all that work? Well, uh, I imagine there's some fine points to that. I'm not well versed in everything, but if I receive a communication that looks like it's the sort of email from for the committee as a whole, I will consider that correspondence to the committee and I will ask uh, Catherine to include that as she did here so in the minutes. it doesn't have to be. Well, if uh, <laughs> Sam gives me a call and says, hey, Charlie, you're doing a great job on the environment or something, that may be, you know, not rising to the level of having to be part of the correspondence. So I guess it's a judgment call. Okay, got it. Are you concerned that no? Well, I just, I'm a little shy to send you an email knowing that like everybody in the world. <laughs> <laughs> you may be subpoenaed though. Because yeah, of it, so. I mean, it's a little, it's a little um, unfamiliar with that, how that works. So well, I'm just trying to get up to speed. If you have any questions, you want to give me a call on my cell phone. Okay. Well, well, the way I was interpreting the FOIA stuff is that if you wanted to send you want to send an email just to Charlie, I have a question. That's not in the FOIA okay. reg. But if you sent CC to the whole group, then now now it's another okay. story. That's a good question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. And these things were not sent to the whole group. They were sent to me, but I thought that the whole group would you be benefit from share. sharing. Got it. Got it. Okay. And I did not put those in there. Somebody else put those in there. Did you put those in there, Ann? Those emails? Ann Womack. Yeah, so should we send them to you and then you put them in? I did not include them in the minutes. In the um, She put them in the agenda. Send them, send them to your chair first and let him send them to me. There you go. There you go. Thank you. I hope have that's to know what my clear. responsibility is. Well, we'll <laughs> 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 and if there's anything goes wrong, blame Charlie. Right. There you go. That's right. So uh, let me ask Evan Miller, who is a uh, Award-winning a member of our staff. Which award did you win? Uh, um, it was the um, Young Professional of the Year Award through the Delaware Association of Public Administration. Nice. Young. Young who don't toot his horn and don't get tooted. So go ahead and <laughs> brag it up. If you right. That's right. And um, Evan has been uh, coming to several different meetings of the Association of Coastal Towns, mm -hmm. which you may know is the coordination of Lewis on all the way down to Fenwick, all those mayors and staff people like Evan yes. uh, has made presentations there. And we are glad to hear from you about what projects you've been pursuing that are of interest to us on the Environment Committee. Yeah. Take it away. Absolutely. Evan. Well, thank you so much for having me here today. Uh, just to do a brief introduction, again, my name is Evan Miller. I'm the projects coordinator with the city of Rehoboth Beach. Uh, I started April 1st, uh, actually full time. Prior to that, I was a local government management fellow, and I split my time between the city of Milford and the city of Rehoboth Beach. Uh, so that was a fellowship that I um, was selected for after receiving my master's in public administration from the University of Delaware. Um, so I'm happy to be here. Um, one of the roles uh, that kind of encompasses my title um, would be, I'm also, I also serve as the grant administrator for the city of Rehoboth Beach. Um, so what I want to talk to you about today, uh, which I think would be of particular interest to you, uh, would be a grant uh, that I submitted for actually back in July of 2018, uh, known as the Resilient Communities Partnership. Um, so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this project. It's a pretty unique project, um, one that has a lot of different partners, mostly coastal communities in Sussex County. Uh, so again, happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, so this presentation actually was one that was recycled from um, the Rascal Summit that occurs every year. Um, so I had given this presentation uh, at the Rascal Summit, and the title of the Rascal presentation- for what again? Uh, the Resilient and Sustainable Communities League. You did that last year, not this year. Uh, this year. This year, yep. did you hear it? And last year as well? Uh, not last year. Well, whenever this year. Whenever, yeah. okay. Um, so the title for my Rascal presentation was A Different Type of Water View. Um, they wanted a kind of cool, fun title. Um, so I, I put this picture up. Uh, this is actually a picture that my girlfriend took one night when we were walking on the boardwalk. Um, and this is usually what people think of when they see, uh, or when they think of a, a water view, right? It's usually a, a picture of the beach. Um, with the ocean, waves, or maybe uh, if you're a community that borders the bay, you think of the bay as well, you know, boats out on the bay, whatever it might be. Uh, but for many of us who work in local government, we also have a different type of water view, and that is the prevalence of flooding that we see, mostly related to heavy rainfall events, coastal storms. Uh, so as you can see, a picture on the left is from a private residence on Philadelphia Street here in Rehoboth Beach. 
uh, after a really heavy rainfall event. Um, so, you know, the heavy rainfall events and the flooding occurs not only on private property, but also on public property as well. Um, as shown in the picture on the right, which is actually, some of you are probably familiar with the area, uh, just outside of Grove Park, uh, also in Rehoboth Beach, at the end of the recent Junction Breakwater Trail extension. Um, so just an example of how, you know, flooding impacts private properties and public uh, properties as well. So being a coastal community, um, we have a lot of challenges, and this is not just for coastal communities, this is for communities in the entire state of Delaware and other states as well. Um, but we're experiencing more frequent drainage issues, and that's as a result of coastal storms. As you can see the picture on the right, that's actually one of our streets department uh, vehicles going down. I believe it's Lake Avenue headed towards Surf uh, during winter storm Jonas in January 2016. Uh, we're also experiencing short but heavy rainfall events and then also flooding um, from the ocean, bays, rivers. When I spent some time in Milford, we, we saw some serious uh, flooding events that occurred from the Mispillion River, mostly after heavy rainfall events. And then also inadequate infrastructure also feeds into that as well. Uh, also, you know, in addition to these coastal storms, heavy rainfall events, uh, we also see growth that's led to an increase in impervious surface coverage. And that can be either caused by redevelopment or new development. Uh, so the pictures I have on the bottom is actually another property here in Rehoboth Beach. On the left, you can see a picture from 2012 where the entire driveway was a pervious material. Uh, so it was a stone or gravel. And then an updated picture that I took uh, pretty recently in 2019 where the entire driveway has been paved with concrete. So that's an example of redevelopment and how it's impacting um, you know, flooding and impacts on infrastructure, uh, specifically as it relates to impervious surface coverage. So the Resili Resilient Communities Partnership, what is it? Why did we, you know, seek to go after this, this program? Um, so RCP, it's a Delaware Department of Natural Resources and Environmental Control uh, Partnership. It's managed through their Delaware Coastal Programs Office. Uh, funding for the grant actually comes from NOAA. Uh, so they are our funding providers, uh, and they then provide those funds to DENREC, which then can distribute it uh, to the local municipalities. Uh, so the goal of the Resilient Communities Partnership is to help communities undertake the necessary planning uh, to become more resilient to coastal hazards. So this is a technical assistance grant, which means that the city does not receive any direct funds from the grant. Uh, essentially what happens is NOAA provides the funds to DENREC and then DENREC can use those funds to pay for contractors that can come in and perform research and analysis and report writing, things like that. And that's what was done. Uh, in this case, uh, the technical assistance amount was around $75,000. Um, so the Delaware Coastal Programs Office, they provide direct staffing, technical support, public outreach, uh, in addition to training uh, to support the coastal and climate resiliency efforts. So in particular, we've been working with Bob Scarborough and Kelly Valensic. Some of you may have heard of Kelly Valensic. She does a lot of presentations related to DENREC projects or coastal resiliency. Um, so in the past, uh, the Resilient Communities Partnership has been awarded to other municipalities as well. Uh, they include the town of Slaughter Beach. Um, Slaughter Beach had uh, essentially use the grant to determine risks and vulnerabilities. They perform public outreach uh, and workshops, and that really helped them draft uh, adaptations <coughs> options, as well as um, they also implemented risk adverse practices as well. Uh, in 2017, they partnered with the city of Newcastle to do a vulnerability assessment and adaptation plan and identify near-term, mid-term, and then long-term actions to reduce the town's vulnerability. And then in 2018, which is now, well, when our project had started um, until now, um, the city of Rehoboth Beach partnered with uh, coastal communities in Sussex County to focus on the growth that we're seeing in impervious surface coverage within our municipalities. Um, one characteristic that I think we all have in common within the coastal communities is our small lot size. Uh, so with that being said, you know, with new development, redevelopment, the goal is to maximize the building uh, spread as much as possible, uh, and that ultimately has impacts on our infrastructure and, and the flooding that we're seeing in our communities. So this is a list of all the Resilient Communities partners. 
Uh, you can see that we've partnered with seven coastal communities, all of the coastal communities in Sussex County, Delaware. Um, the communities that have asterisks next to them were the initial um, partners on the project. So the city of Rehoboth Beach, uh, myself, we, we took the lead, we wrote the application. Uh, at the time, we were gonna work with Dewey Beach, Fenwick Island, and the city of Lewis. And then as we started to do presentations to act or at least talk more about the opportunity, the project that we wanted to do, um, all other coastal communities kind of thought it was really interesting, applicable to them, and jumped on board. Uh, and DENREC welcomed it with open arms because they thought, you know, as much as they can use funds to get uh, a larger benefit, the better. So additional partners and stakeholders, uh, funding again provided by NOAA, uh, specifically the U.S. Department of Commerce. Uh, we also have direct project assistance partners, uh, and that again would be DENREC, their Delaware Coastal Programs, uh, and Office for Coastal Management. In addition to the surface water discharges section, we've had a couple people come in and talk about, you know, MS4 requirements and, and things like that. Um, We've also worked with the two contractors that, were that we use for this project, AECOM and KCI Technologies. So I'll get a little bit more into that, you know, the work that they had done in this partnership. Um, but we essentially use that technical assistance grant, the funds to pay AECOM and KCI for, for these deliverables. And then also we worked with the University of Delaware, specifically their Department of Geography, and I'll get into that a little bit later as well. We also have stakeholders as well. Um, that you know we've consulted with along the way and will continue to do so. Um, that would be the Delaware Center for the Inland Bays as well as uh, SOLA 3, Save Our Lakes Alliance 3, uh, for those of you familiar. So a project overview, uh, essentially the Resilient Communities Partnership focused on three main components. It included a Coastal Delaware Best Management Practices Guide or a BMP guide and that was developed by AECOM. There was also a Delaware Coastal Communities Impervious Surface Coverage Report. That was done by the University of Delaware, their Department of Geography, uh, using GIS information from the state of Delaware and the Chesapeake Conservancy. And then the final deliverable is a Coastal Community Toolkit, which is being developed by KCI Technologies. I will mention that this project is still in the works right now. Uh, we're hoping to wrap it up uh, early this month uh, with final deliverables but I'll go over each one of those components. So the first component is the Delaware Best Management Practices Guide developed again by AECOM. It's a community-based plan designed to summarize strategies for reducing existing and future impervious surface coverage uh, and increasing stormwater infiltration in the Delaware coastal communities. Um, we made it very clear at the start of this partnership that we wanted final reports that were technical to some extent, but were also very user-friendly and easy to understand uh, because we had a lot of stakeholders at the table and ones that would look at the plan and help us implement it. And that would be elected officials, residents, you know, the Center for the Inland Bays, uh, DENREC, who might know more of the technical uh, aspects of the project. But we wanted it to kind of be broad reaching uh, and be something that could be used by all members, agencies, and stakeholders. It was also very clear um, at this point that there was no one-size-fits-all approach. We're all very different. Uh, we all are coastal communities, but our makeup is different, our size is different. Um, you know, a lot of things became clear that it was just better to, um, you know, instead of trying to tailor one direct report um, that could help all communities, that KCI, when they stepped in towards the end, would need to dive a little bit deeper and focus on the specifics, unique challenges, initiatives, things like that, um, to better tweak um, the results of the report for the communities. So for the purposes of this study, uh, well, what is a BMP? It's a technique or device that captures or treats stormwater runoff. And stormwater refers to the rainwater that flows off different types of surfaces after it falls to the ground. So for the purposes of this report, uh, we broke it off into impervious and pervious. So pervious would be surfaces that allow stormwater to seep into the earth, like gardens, forest, grass. And then impervious would be surfaces that don't allow water to seep into the earth, and that could be driveways, roads, sidewalks, rooftops, uh, et cetera. Um, so in general, there are three different general scenarios upon which BMPs can be placed to manage runoff, uh, and that would be existing developed areas on a voluntary basis, 
small impervious areas being proposed that would not otherwise fall under this next scenario, which is the larger earth disturbance. Uh, that's anything over 5,000 square feet. Anything over 5,000 square feet goes to the Sussex Conservation District under Delaware sediment and stormwater management regulations. So many of those properties, many of the properties in our communities meet that sort of under 5,000 square feet threshold. Um, so it was important for us to identify the BMPs that could be implemented uh, in that scenario. Um, so overall, there are 12 BMPs, uh, and each BMP is made up of several characteristics. Uh, the benefits, the benefits can be uh, the runoff rate reduction, uh, water quality, habitat, aesthetics. Um, another characteristic would be property type, so whether it's going to be on residential property or commercial property. Um, there's also feasibility and maintenance, so that could be everything from soils type uh, to slope restriction, hotspot runoff, 100-year floodplain, all these things that could impact the effectiveness of a BMP. Uh, there's also the relative cost to implement and then the level of maintenance as well. Um, also for this report, uh, it ended in a section about implementation strategies, and we broke off the implementation strategies into two categories. One would be regulatory, and the other would be incentive-based. So regulatory examples could be low-impact development, which just encourages a greater focus on minimizing the imperviousness and preserving and re recreating natural habitat and landscape. It could be stormwater fee discounts, uh, if uh, the municipality or other municipalities implement a stormwater utility to help pay for this necessary infrastructure. Uh, and then also regulating disturbances on smaller properties the same way those properties that are over 5,000 square feet are regulated. So some of you may be aware that the city recently passed an ordinance about construction disturbance and requirements that they would have to put in place in order to preserve the quality uh, of the stormwater running off of those locations. And then finally, incentives, so that could be grants or loans. Uh, Sola3, that nonprofit, they provide grants to homeowners to make improvements on their properties. That's one example. Uh, and then awards and uh, recognition programs. So whether that is also done through Sola3 or the Association of Coastal Towns, it's all opportunities that we're, we wanted to look at. So this is just uh, the, skip a absolutely. What is Solo3? I'm not exactly sure. Right. They may have, um, I'm not sure whether they get any funds from the state or whether there's just uh, private funds so people are interested in donating to the nonprofit. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what their fundraising efforts are. So, um, so these are the best, the 12 best management practice examples. So bioretention, bioswales, infiltration. You can see all of them here. Um, I've highlighted tree planting because I just want to Pull, I wanted to pull out one example of a best management practice and show you what it looks like in the, in the final report. So this is what tree planting looks like in the report. Um, as you can see, it has a definition of the BMP. It also addresses the feasibility, which shows soils, drainage type, slope restriction, hotspot runoff, any other restrictions that may impact its ability uh, to be successful. Um, it shows the property type, so residential and commercial, the relative cost of implementing it, uh, the benefit, and level of maintenance. And then on the second page, uh, we actually included a list of uh, native tree species as well that could be planted um, for anybody looking at this document who wants to plant trees. They know what they can plant. Uh, and then with all BMPs, there's photo examples from either, mostly they're examples within the communities themselves, but in some cases they've pulled them from outside of uh, the state or outside of the communities. Um, so they all have photos and they all have a, a brief description of, of the photo as well. So then the second component of the project was the Delaware Coastal Communities Impervious Surface Coverage Report. Again, this was the one that was done by the University of Delaware, uh, their Department of Geography. Um, this came out about the time that AECOM had finished their report, uh, and it had really two main objectives. The first was to look at these GIS layers uh, from the state of Delaware and the Chesapeake Conservancy, and to assess the accuracy of the impervious GIS layers. Uh, uh, geographic information system. So it's basically like a map, and it's got a lot more detailed information that you can overlay uh, within the map. Um, and then the 
determine the change in the impervious surface coverage uh, from 2007 to 2016. Um, so the state of Delaware impervious surface GIS layer uh, came out in 2007, and then the Chesapeake Conservancy land cover data, data set was from 2016. And that data set in particular uses some 2013 and 2014 uh, information as well. So one thing that we're required to mention is the report accuracy assessment. So the accuracy of the information is about 92%. Um, therefore, the changes indicated are within the margin of error. So certainly there's some room for improvement, uh, but at 92%, it was, it was pretty accurate. Um, the accuracy, accuracy assessment, so how they actually performed um, this component of the project was they completed a project raster tool, which essentially looks like a grid that's overlaid on a map. And then within each square of the grid, they select a random sampling point. So they did the project raster tool, they generated sampling points, they also picked some random points for, com uh, for comparison. And then in some cases, they also chose some visual sample points as well from Google Earth and Google Street View. Um, so for example, if they um, selected a random point and it was covered by trees or it was hard to differentiate between whether or not it, it was a driveway but it was asphalt or whether it was gravel. In most cases, the street view would show them what the coverage was at that time. Uh, but it is important to note that there was no on-site analysis performed. So it was all done basically using Google Maps uh, and Google Earth as well. So the results, um, on average, the beach, the beach towns saw uh, an impervious surface coverage of around 32% uh, in 2007 with an increase to 35% in 2016. Um, so it revealed a 3% increase in impervious surface area in the Delaware Beach communities over the 10-year period. Uh, and the private designated areas, which there's a chart there, it's kind of hard to read on the right, um, that had shown that the there was roughly a 2% increase uh, from 2007 to 2016. Um, there were some communities that stuck out a little bit more than others, being uh, South Bethany, uh, Fenwick Island, um, Bethany Beach. Um, so overall, it was good information. Um, I think it was kind of interesting to us. I, I think we had a, an idea of what the impact was, but you know, the information certainly was, was eye-opening. So then the final component of the project is the Coastal Community Toolkit. This is the, the component that's still ongoing right now. Um, so KCI has taken over the project, and one of the things that they had done, it's, the exercise is shown on the right, but they had listed out all 12 best management practices and had asked each community to first show whether or not they wanted to incentivize it or regulate it and whether or not they wanted to do it on private land or public land. So that's a summary of all the results from the communities. You can see the communities listed across the top and all of the BMPs uh, down the left-hand side. Um, so they're gonna take this information. They're also gonna summarize the coastal community's unique challenges and current initiatives. So a challenge, a unique challenge could be, um, you know, Dewey Beach is in the middle of the bay and the ocean, whereas Rehoboth, we just face the ocean. Um, an initiative could be the city of Rehoboth Beach has already taken the initiative to address these construction sites and manage some of the runoff coming from these construction sites where other communities may not have done that. Um, so we had sent that in, I wanna say, a couple weeks ago. Um, so they're kind of analyzing that information. I believe they're gonna put it in a matrix as well, in addition to the coastal community ordinance matrix. So things that communities might already have on the books right now that could address impervious surface coverage. They'll also uh, put together implementation recommendations, so how we might implement some of these best management practices, next steps, and then most importantly, funding opportunities. Um, so last I checked in, I think they have uh, several pages of just grant opportunities that we can apply for to implement some of these best management practices. <coughs> um, so we're expecting this report, uh, hopefully here, probably by next week, um, so soon. And that's really all that I had. I don't know if there was any questions. Sure. Bioswale. Bioswale. Bio so a bioswale is usually just, we actually have 
an example of it sort of here at City Hall, but it's just a depressed area um, that's used to treat stormwater. So the goal is to push it into this area. It kind of just sits there and then it permeates into um, certain native species, um, landscaping that will filter the water before it goes anywhere else. Um, so it's just basically just a depressed area that holds water, treats it, and eventually it dissipates. Yes, yep. Mm -hmm. um, it's all well and good to do this BMP thing, which a lot of these ideas are been around for a while, but um, what I would like to see is if the city, and I guess where it comes up here in Rehoboth um, with construction projects that um, are typically in your um, 50 by 100 lots, mm -hmm. um, now the city requires when people tear down a house and build a new house, they have to have two off street parking spaces. Mm -hmm. And so this incentivizes people to put new driveways in where they didn't exist. And um, I, I know we're, I, we, we have a place where we just had a, we parked like in the dirt and it was not paved. And now um, we're, we're building a new house, we have to put a, a drive, we're required to put a driveway in. And just because of who I am, I, I am putting in impervious pavers in, but it's more expensive and I'm just doing it because I want to. And I'm not getting any um, incentive encouragement from the city or any sort of give and take, like, you know, if you, uh, people, they're making people put driveways in, so why don't they try to make people put impervious pavers. Right, and that sort of ties back to the incentive base versus the regulatory base. So incentives, we're looking at those as well. Um, you know, one of the thoughts that we have and all the coastal communities are looking at it because there's this, you know, obviously we wanna do what's good uh, for the environment and make sure that we're treating any stormwater runoff as much as possible before it's going into our lakes and oceans. Um, so one thought that we had is, um, you know, how can we incentivize, whether it be through um, stormwater fee discounts, if we were to implement a stormwater fee, uh, how can we work with nonprofit organizations or the state to make sure that residents are given these grant opportunities, they're aware of them, they can apply for them, we can help them apply for them. Uh, and at the same time, we're taking a look at the code for the regulatory approach. Uh, one of the things that I noticed in our code was that the code requires a sidewalk to specifically be an impervious surface coverage. So it can't be a pervious sidewalk. So looking at small little nuances in the code like that that we can change to ultimately, you know, make that option available to those who are interested in That's doing the it. That's the Robust Beach but Code says yes. that as opposed yep. to the state code? Yeah. Great, that should be easy enough to change. Right, mm -hmm. right. I, so KCI is aware of that one. I just want to really reinforce what she's saying is yeah. that there's a huge opportunity right now. We tore down, what, 22 houses in this town this, mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. this past fall? Mm -hmm. And to incentivize or come up with some type of um, plan for making those driveways impervious is a Absolutely. really big opportunity that Absolutely. if we don't have something in place by next September, you're gonna miss that wave again. So, and, you know, I, we don't have a stormwater fee in Rehoboth, do we? No, we do not. No, I think implementing one would probably be like, so we would have to come up with something else, but I really think that's something we can really do. Yeah. And yeah. out in the develop, in the developments, in the county, out where I live, um, there's big business that comes around and knocks on your door. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, we have gravel in our driveway. And wouldn't you like, wouldn't you like to have that paved? No, I don't want it paved. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if we can deal with businesses in some way. But there certainly mm -hmm. needs to be incentive because there's, it is more expensive. It is. Not well, the county is, is a, not a mess. I mean, that, that Rehoboth, at least, fortunately, we're not talking about deforestation and carving up entire farms and whatnot. But yeah, so that, that's a whole other can of worms. Uh -huh. but, and it is a can. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have a couple of questions. Sure. So um, I just went through a um, lift of my, prop, my house um, near the wastewater treatment facility and um, didn't know about any of the information that would 
in there. So how do how do you know? Fortunately, I had a lot of good advice and, and I knew enough that I think I did a decent job. But how would somebody see where that that B, BMP plan? How how would would I have had access to that if I knew about it? So the goal is to once the final report is finished to make it available on the city website. Um, and then we also want to work with our building and licensing staff as well to just make sure that people are aware of options that are out there, uh, as well as the information being available on the website and accessible. Because there's a, a lot of really good information too, and um, I think having that GIS comparison also proves that you know it, it is an issue or uh, there is a growth in impervious surface coverage. And I think as much as we can make resources available uh, and have them easily accessible to people, the, the better. Uh, and I think it'll be, you know, especially interesting to see what potential funding opportunities come from KCI's analysis, uh, because ultimately it could be the city applying for grants, or it could be private, you know, property owners uh, applying for those grants as well. So I'm I'm anxious to see, you know, what really comes out and how much, how many resources are really out there to implement some of these things. So that was one of my questions: whether those um, resources would would be available for individuals. Is three percent a lot? That doesn't seem like no, a lot. No, I don't. Is that a lot? It wasn't as much as I thought it would be. Um, I think it was more interesting to see some of the other communities, how much they've grown in impervious surface coverage. But to compare Rehoboth to Lewis isn't fair because Lewis has a lot more new development than Rehoboth does. Um, and at the same time, I think what Rehoboth has within the code that we there has to be a certain percentage of the lot being natural area. So depending on how long that's been in the code, it's probably been in there at least for the last 10 years. Um, that could ultimately impact, you know, the analysis or the growth in impervious surface coverage. Um, so I don't know if it's a lot or a little. It's a little. Um, you know, compared to what's going on in the right. rest of the state, it's a tiny. It's a little, yeah. Right. And it, um, I read something recently, and I wish I could remember where I read it, but somebody said, and, and I know this because I'm all about native plants, I think that's so important. Mm -hmm. And that was the first thing that was in your BPM, BMP. But um, somebody said, and if anybody knows where I read this, please help me, that it really didn't matter whether we planted native plants. If we're going to make these barriers in between developments, it doesn't matter whether we, if we plant natives. Does anybody remember reading that somewhere? And I thought, wow, that. isn't that interesting that somebody would say that? Fake news. It's not true. Fake news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, is, it, is. it does matter. Yeah, it really does. So. Yeah. So yeah. that was really great. Yeah. Very exciting. I have a question. Sure. Which is, do you and the city have some way of trying to establish priorities? What's your, you know, your top ten list on places that need help within the city? Uh, which are the cheapest, I guess, but effective ways right. of addressing the. For example, the street flooding. I mean, right. walking down here from my house about four blocks away, you know, you can see two or three inches of water in the gutter area. Mm -hmm. Is that a high priority or is that a low priority? People right. might just say, oh, that's just a little bit of nuisance flooding. It'll all go away. What we really ought to do is address the sure. something that's more important. Sure. How do you Absolutely. make those decisions? And that'll be something, too, that we continue to analyze more and more, especially with the director of public works, because... You know, we hear from property owners all the time, residents, we hear about where the areas of concern are. And I think, you know, lately it's been whenever you hear of an issue, you try to address it. And then there's certain areas where if there's more flooding, you know, that's going to take a higher priority. But at the same time, I think lately, uh, especially within the last couple of years as I've been with the city, there's been a stronger focus on water quality as well. So I think water quality has also increased uh, in the ranks of terms of priority uh, just as much as water quantity as well. Um, so I think kind of looking at the quality and quantity issue, uh, as well as improvements that we can make in infrastructure. Um, I showed you the property of uh, Philadelphia Street. Um, the street, the uh, water department was out there uh, making a, doing a water main replacement, and we actually focused on the issue of flooding on that street during that project as well. So as much as we're doing stormwater improve or just infrastructure improvements as much as we can think of, you know, other ways that we can address these other outlying issues that we're, we might be able to deal with at the same time. May I say um, amen to your focus on quality because, uh, like, just walking down here this morning, I took a couple of pictures of oil slicks. Right. Yeah. You see their little rainbow color after yeah. a rain, right. and that's washing off into 
the grates and into the sewers, I presume, Absolutely. and that goes into the ocean or the canal. Absolutely. And I'm uh, hoping to ask uh, Kevin Williams, maybe he can help, you can help us on this. There are some sort of filtering of that water before it goes to the canal on some but not all of the streets in our town. Is that right? Correct. I don't know the locations of the filtering dev devices and what they are. Um, but what I will say is back to the, the, the water quality component, at the same time we've been doing this Resilient Communities Partnership, we've also been working on a stormwater implementation plan. We're actually in the second phase of that. Um, so the stormwater implementation plan first tested the water quality from all our stormwater outfalls. Um, that at that time we're going to the ocean. We've now done the second phase which has sort of backed up from the outfalls to focus on the areas uh, of downtown Rehoboth Beach where we saw the highest concentration of bacteria and trying to trace that back to the source. Um, in talking with Kevin, we're actually gonna go for a third phase as well, which is just going even further to try and go further west on Rehoboth Avenue to really trace it back as much as possible. So I think doing these two projects at the same time, the stormwater implementation well plan as long as, as well as the Resilient Communities Partnership they kind of go hand in hand. So you have, how can we address the quantity and quality stormwater implementation plan, quality, but where's it coming from and what can we do? Um, so I think those two plans will certainly help us, you know, apply for more funding, uh, more projects that we can do to improve the quality and quantity, so. I understand also that there are sewage places, uh, not sewage, stormwater, not sewage, stormwater runoff problems on the south side of Rehoboth where it's just, backs up, it can't get out mm -hmm. of the ocean fast enough to get right. rainfall coming in, and so that pushes the water back up to the surface and you've got flooding there. Right. Several people complained to me when I ran for city commissioner, unsuccessfully, about those sorts of problems, and they said, why don't we just put in a dry well here, which is one of the things on your list right. of DMPs, mm -hmm. which is basically just a hole next to the gutter where the water can go down in there and seep into the soil rather than going through a, a pipe and going out to the ocean mm -hmm. or something like mm -hmm. that. I thought that was a great, cheap way of doing yeah. it. In fact, the other day I saw a guy digging a dry well in, yeah. in the street, and I was wondering, is he hired by the city, or is <laughs> that somebody who just wanted to get right. water out of his uh, right. parking lot? <laughs> right. It looked pretty cheap, you know? Yeah. And very exciting. I know this is not your resilient communities, but is anybody working with the resilient counties? So we... Sussex County is. Right. We, um, so I've been doing monthly presentations or just updates to the Association of Coastal Towns on the Resil Resilient Communities Partnership. And I do know that uh, Todd Lawson, the town administrator, has been at those meetings. They've had county council members at those meetings as well. I don't know what their initiatives are currently, but they are at least aware of what we've done here. Uh, one of our other goals of this project, which we said from the very beginning is, We've really focused on these seven coastal communities, but we want documents and reports that we can provide to the entire state. I mentioned earlier how, you know, when I worked with Milford, um, the city manager and I went down and we saw flooding firsthand from the Mispillion River during a heavy rainfall event. So any, as much as we can make these documents available to other communities as well, counties, whoever it might be, uh, so that they can use these resources, you know, the better. Um, so they're aware that we've been working on this project. They're aware that these deliverables are out there. Um, so at this point, it's just one of the uh, things that we want to continue with this project is just continued coordination, continued communication between Denrec County, Association of Coastal Towns, uh, other municipalities uh, as much as possible. And actually, the um, Kelly Valencic and, and Bob Scarborough from the Resilient Communities Partnership did mention that you know they really enjoyed working on this project and they'd entertain you know additional applications in the future. Um, so yeah, I think that's good things to come. Kevin, is this presentation available on the web? Um, it is not, but we can make it available on the website. It's available within the agenda. So right now you just have to go to the Environment Committee to today's agenda and it's linked there. Document Center. But I can certainly make the presentation available too whenever we publish all the final reports. Um, we did have um, Tracy DeLiberty from the University of Delaware come and do a more comprehensive, detailed uh, presentation on the GIS comparison. Um, we've had AECOM come in and do the presentation on the Coastal Communities Best Management Practices Guide. 
um, and KCI has done mostly just an update presentation, but we'll make sure all those documents are available on the website. Yes. <laughs> um, and quickly, because I know that we're going to run out of time. How did you all decide to do this? Did you so, say, first of all, did you say Well, that? I'm glad you said that because what I wanted to say in the very beginning was I had no idea that the Resilient Communities Partnership even existed. Um, I was actually at a rascal event when Kelly Valenza got up and was talking about the Resilient Communities Partnership. Um, at the same time, I was also working on a certification through the University of Delaware. It was a planning certification. Their Institute for Public Administ Administration provides these three-hour trainings, usually in the morning, and you get so many credits that you'll get a certification. So one of the courses in the planning certification, Kelly was there to present, and she mentioned it again. So I kind of looked into it. I thought it was a great opportunity. Um, at the Association of Coastal Towns meeting, they've talked about this growth we're seeing in impervious surface coverage. So we all just kind of got our heads together at the same time and said, this would be a great project. And then, you know, the city of Rehoboth Beach just said, we'll take the lead. All you guys need to do is basically write us a letter of support. And um, from there, I think traction kind of grew. More and more people heard about it. And next thing you know, we had all coastal communities in Sussex County. At one point, we started to gravitate more north. I know we had some people from Slaughter Beach saying, hey, we want to jump in on the project. And Denrec was just there, like, we got to draw the line somewhere. Uh, because the funds can only go so far. Um, but at the same time, it goes back to all these documents being available to all the municipalities in Delaware. Um, it doesn't have to do with also that um, the state's coastal management uh, program has to do with um, the concerns about climate change and Correct. And that's how, that's why they, the whole term resilient Absolutely. community is in Absolutely. response yep. to, to that. It's yep. a whole effort in state. Yep. And that's Absolutely. why they're focusing, even though the, the coastal towns, uh, per, the towns per se, aren't really the source of a lot of the problems that are in the, the overall county, mm -hmm. they're going to get hit first. Right. So, right. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you. Other questions for? Uh, Anybody in the audience have questions? So great. Evan, thank you so much for thank sharing you. this. Uh, if time. we have uh, follow-up questions, gosh, I wish I'd thought to ask them. <laughs> Can we communicate directly with you? Yeah, or? that's fine. Yep. If you want to just email me any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Well, uh, let's uh, go on to other items on the agenda. We'll, um, we uh, have a discussion on our number eight on our agenda would be things to talk about in the future agendas. But if we have a little bit more time here, I was sort of hoping we might consolidate our thinking from last month, in which many of us have suggested things that they were interested in. Yeah. Uh, and it occurs to me that we have areas of interest, uh, issue areas, like a plastics team, was yeah. those people who came to the Rise Up, plus others who may want to help work on those to investigate what other cities and towns have done through the starcommunities.org that uh, you came up with. Thank you, Janet. Um, figuring out the, what's the cost of these various things. Where has it worked well? Where has it not worked well? What can we walk before we run uh, sort of things? Can we take a half a step? Uh, likewise, we may want to have a water team uh, following up on Evan's presentation here to think about uh, code changes for pervious services for maybe even requiring uh, new construction to have a pervious surface for driveways, unless, of course, they can show extenuating, extenuating circumstances like somebody's in a wheelchair and they can't roll across the gravel or, or something. I don't know. Uh, if anybody wants to be on a water team, if you see that as something you'd like to spend some time thinking or, or drafting up uh, some proposals or recommendations, uh, let me know. I, I myself would like to be on the energy team. I'm a big <laughs> solar energy, electric vehicle energy conservation person. I know Kevin is as well. Uh, we may have others who are interested in that topic too who might want to to uh, to do that. I'm thinking we ought to have another team for gardens, trees, pesticides, uh, and uh, we don't want to step on the toes, of course, of our friends from the Trees Committee, but I think we ought to be able to work uh, in uh, two horses pulling the same sleigh, uh, to use a Christmas uh, analogy. There's a question about that. Does anyone know what's happening with the new school? Who's planting the trees? What's being done? I know it's school property, but is there any relationship? At least you know uh, about that? We have discussed that. Uh, it, it is. Oh. 
Oh, sure. Yes. Yes. I understand that, but it's... Jurisdiction. So the city didn't have any input into their plan. However, they are planting a lot of data, a lot of plants and trees. And we saw the plan. I don't know if the plan ended up in any of our documents, document in the document section or not. But uh, they, you know, they work with the contractor landscape company. But we hope it's going to be good. Well, I, uh, along that same topic, knew that when they were working on the elementary school, I wrote and said, why don't we have solar panels all over the roof of the school? It'd be great hands-on learning. I got no response whatsoever. It was just like, why should we care about you? There's not really, at least I haven't figured it out yet, a way of uh, getting any feedback from the school board or whoever it is. It's, the, it's the Cape and Logan School District. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Well, I wrote to them. That's what yeah. I was told would be the best people. Yeah. Uh, now that they're planning, and all, it's good. I'm glad you're in a relationship. That's all. I just felt like I was running into this is uh, the time to hit. Yeah, just a get a nothing. Yeah, running with a brick wall or a pervious surface or whatever. You know. <laughs> Everything. Okay, One thing I would think, though, if they're located within the city limits, they have to comply with city code, and you know, the city has, should have some hook on on how it gets built. Or some, you know. I don't know about that, but I. Yeah, I don't know. If there's a if there is a plan that you have seen, Elise, is that? Yeah, it? there is a landscape plan. A landscape plan. I would think that our tree, our tree um, arborist or whatever, should have some. Unfortunately, not. They're saying uh, not. Uh, they're saying they don't have any interest in putting, giving input, or they don't have what? There really wasn't an opportunity to provide input. Right. I mean, it was the Cape and Logan School District. That they decided. They just can do whatever they want. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. I don't either. And yes, I don't know whether it's it's individual, maybe you would know, individual teachers or classes, but they had this wonderful garden at the other school. They had a school-based vegetable garden, and it's gone to rack and ruin. It's kind of just, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it'll be torn down when the other school's torn down, or... Uh, but it was really neat. Raised beds. Um, There's also a pollinator a section with that yeah. because it's a wonderful teaching tool for the young oh, ones. Oh, it's a fantastic. Start with them young. I mean, yeah. It, yeah. I understand it's not our responsibility, but it's yeah. uh, under the relationship. But it, it was right there, and the facility is right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to have teachers that are at the building that yeah. that's right. promote this. That are into it. Because yeah. I, I did that at my school when I retired, and I don't know what happened to it. But yeah. Yeah. You've never yeah. driven back. Huh? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Gardeners and stuff. Right. Garden club and, yeah. and then, you know, there's gardens. There's no one watering them in the summer. That's yeah. right. true. That's the big yeah. excuse. That's that true. Yeah. Everyone has school break, and that's when they really start going to rock and roll. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's have... no water source over there. There's yeah. no one yeah. caring about We could have rain gardens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's hard. We do have a group here in uh, Rehoboth, Rehoboth and Bloom, which has volunteers that go around and water the new uh, wa the uh, boxes they have along Rehoboth and some of the other streets as well. Thank you to uh, Dick Byrne and others who are volunteers hauling buckets even in the summer. Uh, anybody want to sign up with Rehoboth and Bloom? I'm sure they'd be glad to accept your uh, muscle efforts. Uh, they're expanding, as I understand it, trying to have more boxes like that. But as to the school watering in the summer. Hey, in the spring on Arbor Day. Mm -hmm. That's a big we one. We did uh, plant. We you know, planted a couple of trees in the past years, including uh, 2019. Unfortunately, if you go there now, right. the trees have died. Mm -hmm. I guess because of lack of water. Uh, and there and there are interested school teachers. Mm -hmm. And you know the kids have an art art uh, contest here around Arbor Day. Sure. So I'm not sure why our our um, All our so tree stuff well. doesn't apply to that. You know, our if you're if if you're a resident here in Rehoboth and you want to remove one tree, you have to go through a whole process. And I don't know why um, the school doesn't have to comply with our, our tree code. I mean, I think they do. They they didn't remove that many trees. I don't think. 
Yeah, they just tore they buildings remove, down. They didn't remove any trees? I don't, I live across the street from it. Okay. Yeah, I did. It's out in the big field. Yeah. The new school is out in the middle of it. It was in there, field. in yeah. there, like yeah. hockey fields and stuff. Yeah. 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 Okay. But, you know, it's a good question because they built rain gardens and, yeah. you know, ways of sustaining yeah. water. Um, but, you know, a lot of folks don't know about that kind of stuff. Well, I noticed that in Grove Park, I live pretty close there, uh, they planted several new trees along the canal side of the park. Uh, they're you know, about as big as that around as a trunk, and uh, several of them are dead. And I'm presuming it's the same problem. Nobody mm -hmm. came and watered them. Yeah. Uh, maybe we mm -hmm. can talk to the Rehoboth and Bloom folks about right. is there a voluntary group that might water trees like that if they are mm -hmm. ever replaced, the ones that are dead now? Would fire trucks? I know communities have a fire truck go around, uh, you know, not every day, right. mm -hmm. but make sure, uh, for instance, a tree is watered, especially in the dry spells. You need a lot of water when you plant a new tree, like 15 gallons a week is what I've been told, just in oh, one right. sitting. <laughs> that's well, a lot of water, water. but that's, that's a lot, that's a lot of diesel. And then you around. sustain it. Well, you know, we have it a lot of makes water. Makes it. Mm -hmm. Great. Maybe we have a lot of water when it rains it's and there's flooding. Places. But then and sometimes we'll have a dry spell and then right. the trees then die. Well, supposedly native trees don't need as much. Yeah, yeah they're a little better. Um, just they initial years. That's yeah, that's yeah, initial years. Yeah. 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 Well, you may recall that, I think I mentioned it last time around, that we had an excellent presentation here in this room yes. uh, by uh, Doug, Doug, Doug Tallamy, Tal thank you, I was struggling to remember his name, <laughs> talked about oak trees as being amongst the best. Uh, and uh, other trees uh, not really being much of a home for birds, moths, butterflies, bees, caterpillars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and caterpillars, etc. Uh, so to the extent that, uh, you know, whatever we're doing, we can encourage a planting of the right kind of trees. I mean, there are native trees, and then there are native trees that are better right. for mm -hmm. other critters that are vital to our ecosystem. So uh, maybe that might be part of the thinking and recommendations of a gardens, trees, pesticides mm -hmm. team. Yeah. Um, Anybody want to be on that besides Heather? I don't want to be on that. <laughs> Susan does, I think that would be good. So Heather, Catherine, and Susan. I'll go on it. Okay. Mary. Mary. You know, can I say one more thing about um, the school? I, I'm astounded that there was no solar put on Me that school. Too. Absolutely. I mean, they've got the most beautiful mm -hmm. south-facing <laughs> roofs. <laughs> And there's nothing on, and and they have the roof like you have that's that's corrugated. Is that the right racing thing? metal roof? Yeah. So that you can just <coughs> clip so onto just that without having to make on. a penetration through the roof yep. to worry about water leakage. Yep. It's a great system. Yep. They don't have one ounce of yeah. solar. Well, there, we may not really want to give up on that. You can always right. come around later and retrofit. Yeah. Is it easy? You can retrofit fairly easily. Well, it's a little more expensive to retrofit than to have done it right. right the first time. <laughs> Trying to get enough funding out of yeah. time. Yeah. It sounds like we don't have good leadership on our school board. School board. I asked a young lady who sings with sometimes at church with us. Mm -hmm. She said, no, it was never discussed. Oh, said, dear. Wow, isn't that interesting? I would like to be on a recycling. I'd like to meet with the people that recycle on the board, boardwalk. Yes. And, um, mm -hmm. and do that, but also deal with the businesses. Um, and I don't yeah. know exactly how, but. Those are, mm -hmm. if we could have a, if we could get to work on some of that. That sounds yes. like a team that would involve you, Stuart. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I really, yeah. Me too. And, and I don't know if this and is Janet. appropriate, Charlie, but in terms of immediacy, would it be, would it be appropriate to detect, because you have a plastic, you're talking about a plastics team, would it be appropriate to, because of the urgency of, and timing, and is to break these down into the, like the plastic bottle team and the plastic bag team because those are two low hanging fruit. It's all you can't avoid it in the news. Or would it be better? So two separate teams versus no, because they're two. They are two different issues. Mm -hmm. They both do include businesses and right. bulk, obviously. Um, but one of the, the bottle the bottle thing is involves all those water fountains on the right. on the boardwalk. It involves a huge too. amount of marketing. Right. And a huge opportunity for businesses and marketing, and and because we're marketing to the five hundred thousand visitors, that's who we're marketing to. Right, that's going to cost the just and the chambers got to be involved. Yeah. Yeah. The chamber of commerce with someone. Carol with the chamber, we need mm -hmm. to involve her. And, and, um, right. Well, coming out of these teams, I'm hoping that you all may feel free 
to meet in less than quorum numbers uh, or oh, phone calls or allowed. coffee. Uh, you have my permission to do that without me being there. Um, uh, for example, uh, Heather, if you want to be the lead on the gardens, trees, pesticides uh, team, uh, I'm just appointing you that. How about that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Pesticides is if, my number one issue. If but you maybe want to you share any kind of leadership that. roles with others, sure. I certainly understand you don't have to be hierarchical, uh, you know, more horizontal. You guys know more about the uh, I welcome you to do so. Eventually, though, I'm hoping that maybe for our next meeting, we might have something coming out of the energy team that will be a draft proposal on what we might think would be good to recommend. Uh, just, you know, a rough draft that would have spots that need to be filled in on uh, research needed here Let's or go for it. cost okay. estimates you know needed here or some, something like that. Uh, so that, you know, we are appointed for a one-year term. And before you know it, our one year is going to be gone. Right. Exactly. If, we, if we don't get to work. Then we should be getting to work. And I think part of our work is drafting up reasonable, rational recommendations and proposals. Get that the conversation will... going. Yes. And I think with the, um, the plastics, we should try and find someone, like one person, who would be willing to put together a proposed ordinance that can be then discussed in the group um, as a separate track from the more amorphous working with the business community on um, stuff, you know, it, because Susan Gay actually says she would support, um, you know, a, the, a recommendation of, of, of um, some kind of ban in the city. Right. Well, let's, let's think of it maybe as options that we could present yeah. to our yeah. commissioners and with our recommendations to which are the better options. Yeah. Uh, would it be a ban or would it be a fee? Yeah. Uh, would it be a, you know, a, another option or another way of approaching the yeah. issue? Because um, even if you, within um, recommending specific ban, then, you know, the, the community will have to, you know, then that's a whole other piece. How are they going to deal with it? And, you know, like Nantucket's Chamber of Commerce actually got together and found, um, so, like, a source for businesses to buy compostable yeah. packaging at a better rate than if they all individually tried to get it or, you know, like, so the Chamber of Commerce can be a real partner for them to, um, you know, get what they need to, to deal with it. But Any I'd, proposal we make, I would also not only like to see the inputs that you've suggested, Mary, but yeah. the pros and cons section so yeah. that we don't just yeah. present to the commissioners yeah. In one side of the picture, and then they can later on say, well, what about this? You didn't yeah. think about that? Well, we should uh, think about those things yeah. and say, here's some pros, here's some cons, here's the response, maybe, to yeah. the mm -hmm. cons, uh, so that we will give them a, a balanced view as well as our recommendations. Sound like a deal? It Catherine, do you want to ask another I question? I do. <laughs> You've learned <laughs> very nerve. quickly. I ask a, lo a lot of questions. I think I already told you that. Maybe you wouldn't want me on your team. Um, no, are the not. recycled plastics team, is that one group or are those two separate groups? Because I kind of, you know, I totally agree with you. I, I, the recycle, mm -hmm. I think, I just get rid of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. well, it's not, it, I mean, I know we can't get rid of it, but I think our yeah. focus so really needs, needs to, to go that. much yeah. higher than that. Yeah. So, um, do, is, so for the, um, for the accuracy of my notes, do we want that team to be the same team or those two separate teams? Well, Good be, question, really. Because mm -hmm. well, first of all, that. we have um, the board, the city has a boardwalk com committee or commission, and they are so working on recycling. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is a project that is happening in the city. And, um, and just because we want to get past plastic doesn't mean we shouldn't recycle what we're what we but do now. we need to work but on it? We if need to. If if we we're we might on not. I mean, and I do we? Need and I hadn't even thought of that. Yeah. I think I just thought, you know, yeah. we're pushing, we're do, pushing higher. Yeah. And do mm -hmm. we need to somehow coordinate with them, mm -hmm. or at least know what they're going on? I mean, should we visit one of their meetings or ask to come to? Probably. Well, to answer your question, yes. Stan Mills is a leader of that effort for the boardwalk recycling. Okay. And he and I've had discussions. Uh, I mean, even he's friend as well as being a former commissioner uh -huh. uh, I will be glad to stay in touch with him in, in continuing basis okay the thinking I think is they would see how it works on the boardwalk part of things and if it's successful it would expand to the beach, beach. side of things right. and if that is successful we then might consider saying well how about 
having a recycling bin right next to all the garbage cans up and down Rehoboth Avenue, mm -hmm. or Rehoboth and Baltimore and Wilmington Avenues. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, taking it stepwise right. rather than doing everything all at once. Because they're just working on the boardwalk. Right now, that's, right. All that's, that's their pilot. That's all, that's all we're going to do. Yeah. That's their pilot. So do I make the plot? So Nettie was on the recycle team. The, the, Thanks what, for coming, Elise. What I'm really asking is about Stuart. Do you want to be on the recycle team or the plastics team? Plastics. And then Janet? Yep, plastics. Plastics. So I want Nettie, to be on the plastics team. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then, Everybody wants to be on the, with the cool kids on the plastics right. team. Right. <laughs> cool. Leaving me as a recycle Oh, I think it's for the they miss it rise up. And, See, they're meeting it rise up. <laughs> 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 like, I mean, they're uh -huh. not any Clubhouse. They're clubhouse. So plastics then, is young. Charlie, you're the, you're the recycle team, or you and Nettie are the recycle team? Or do we have a recycle team? Or do we want a recycle team? Well, I would like to see a recycle team because I think it's one component okay. of trying to reduce our waste stream. Right. Okay. So, yeah. so you're in touch with Stan, and Nettie has very strong feelings, so I'm going to put those two, you two on the team. Okay. Okay. Can you be on two teams? Yes. Oh, you're, you're allowed to be on two teams. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the only one I formed. <laughs> I would be glad to have you be on more than two teams if mm. you feel you've got the bandwidth to handle all that. Uh, I don't want you to be on 16 teams because then you'd be spread thin. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Uh, so we have to have a rule of well, reason. How do you see the team, the whole team thing working out? Like, do you want it to keep it small enough that they don't have to go through public notice? Or um, I would like to. Otherwise, yes. we'll have to give yes, a meeting. Mm -hmm. All the activities right. will be going on here so, and no other time during the month. Yeah. So, like, is that, what is that? Six or less or five? I forget what the four is. If we have five, yeah. we do not have a quorum. If we have yeah. six, we have a quorum. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Five of Plastics is Janet, Stewart, Nettie, and you. Who else? Did I miss anybody? This is the flat plastic fan? Yeah. I'm interested in it, but... Well, that's still only I four. Really need more, so that's still not a quorum. Still not a okay. quorum. Okay. One, two, three, four. But okay. you also have to listen to that tape again about what the city solicitor and also Max Walton said about subcommittees. I will what do they say about it? What? About what? Remind us, Ann. Uh, if you have a member of one, if you're a sub you don't have a quorum. So you can have a team, it can be a, a team, a group, a working group. It doesn't matter what you call it, it is still a subcommittee, right. an ad hoc committee, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. If you have more than that, then you will have to notice and you will have to have minutes. Great. That's exactly the way I understood it. That subcommittees, yeah. less than our quorum, are free to get together uh, without having to have a fully noticed mm -hmm. meeting. Right. Is that right? Yeah. Quorum uh, means if you have an ad hoc committee, and yeah. say you have three of your members, mm -hmm. right? You have a membership of three members on that ad hoc oh. committee. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what a quorum members. would be two oh, of those boy. members. Oh, so that, um, that all the subcommittees would have to have notice and seven-day notice and that sort of thing. Is that only meetings in person? Or does that apply to emails and phone conversations? Well, when you get into emails, then that's a totally different story because then you're talking about serial meetings. Yeah. I boy really of suggest emails. that you listen to that. Yeah. Well, thank you, Ann, for helping me clarify that. Uh, I wasn't aware of the fact that you know, a subcommittee such as the plastics team would yes. have uh, a membership of five or whatever, and that, that might have to be noticed if three of them are meeting together. That uh, that slows down the process, it seems to me. I'll have to look at that again and see if there's some, some way, uh, you know, just communicating by email. Maybe that would be uh, circulating of a draft proposal would be acceptable without having the in-person meetings, but... Well, what I would suggest, if since this plastics thing is something big that we want to work on, we'd start with that we can have a public or whatever, the, go through the procedures, but just say, this is just to work on plastics. Notice, notice the meeting. Yeah, notice Seven the meeting. Seven days in advance. Therefore, if you do it like that, then, and now that we're, you can't get away from those requirements, then anybody on this committee who wants to go can go it's not going to put you over your numbers and then you know work on the work on the plastics um if you have to do it because you need the time that we don't have 
in this bigger meeting, but you probably still have to put it out for notice. So that's what I would think, say, okay, we're going to start working on plastics, and this is the date that we're going to do it. Well, do you want to establish a date now that the plastics... Well, what if we just decided as a committee to make our next meeting about plastics? We could do that, and when we can talk... We did that pretty much this meeting. Right. So, yeah. 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 so then, <laughs> whole hour almost on a discussion of plastics. Because I agree that with as... you. That's the big issue right now: plastics, mm -hmm. recycling, blah blah yeah. blah. So, what Let's if we that. just yeah. I, make well, that our? I'm hopeful that Dee Durham will be able to appear electronically right. or in person for our February meeting. Mm -hmm. In which case, a whole lot of the discussion is going to be about plastics. So right. And then maybe instead of. Because the other issues, right at the, they're all really important. I'm not denying the importance of all of them. But that's the one that seems to be front and center mm -hmm. with Rehoboth right now. Mm -hmm. So maybe instead of meeting separately, we could use these meetings as our plastics meeting, our that pesticides yeah, meeting. But I think we need to take action yeah. instead mm -hmm. of just talk. Right. Uh, but we can in, in other words, <coughs> come up with. If we're doing this the next meeting, come up with a proposal to the council of, yes, of what we're, of, of we could do this or we could do that, but put it before the council, we want a decision. Mm -hmm. And in other words, not talk anymore. Yeah. Well, yes. yes. So our number one priority. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have a short mm -hmm. time. We want to make sure that at least on this one, others are working on, yeah. but this one we want to put front and center. Well, I will report to you that on February the 10th, after our February 7 meeting, there is scheduled a workshop of the commissioners. And Susan Gay would like to have an opportunity to present at that workshop about plastics. plastics right. So this would be good timing mm -hmm. for us to meet on February 7, further good. consolidate our ideas and recommendations, good. options or whatever that would be available should the commissioners want to hear from their environment mm -hmm. committee on this issue. Mm -hmm. I think that the Please hear what we have to say about it because okay. they're going to hear what Sola 3 says about it and they're going to hear what the Homeowners Association there you says go. about it. Okay. They will look to us as well for Thank our you. input. Okay. I think also maybe yeah. just to, to be efficient, if there's anybody here who has something they really think they can do or idea or mm -hmm. if, if that can be, if, if people would volunteer to do stuff between now and the next mm -hmm. meeting and yeah. even, even in terms of... Um, Maybe even proposals that people can. Yeah. So when we go to the next meeting, we're not just sort of yeah. like randomly, right, right. you know, right. about like your Nantucket, yeah. your Nantucket yeah. thing to have. Yeah. That. yeah, I agree. So I think something needs to be done between now and the next Agreed. meeting Agreed. so Agreed. that we can really be more more productive with with it. Eddie, could some of us, maybe? I mean, Janet and I were talking about this go up and down the street in Rehoboth and interview businesses as far as members of the environmental committee and ask them what they are doing, just a listening kind of tour, and do this before the next meeting. What are you doing about single-use plastics? And would that be appropriate? Would it help? I would hope that we could do that in short order. I would think or recommend that we might want to touch base with uh, Dick Byrne and Lisa Schlosser, our commissioners, our ex officio members. They will probably, I'm just guessing, recommend that we coordinate with the Chamber of Commerce uh, and to have the imprimatur or blessing or whatever of the Chamber of Commerce before we go mm -hmm. barnstorming through all the businesses. Okay. And they'll say, who are you? Okay. And they'll say, well, we've been working with the Chamber and this is an area of inquiry, and they'll say, I suspect they would give you a warmer welcome. I don't know. Okay. Just That's a good idea. idea. I would so suspect also, you think Carol should put out the notice to all the businesses. Yes, Carol. And get them over the at the Congress. And then all of a sudden, then you've got a, then you get 10 of them all in, room, in their chamber meeting room, and you could really discuss the whole issue in one, in one or two hours and just do the whole thing. So tell me, what did you say again? So get somebody goes to that chamber meeting? Really, Carol is the head of the chamber. Uh -huh. So you go to Carol and say, Carol, the, and she, because they have a place on their website where they, their last entry was 2017. So they, they were trying to work on it and they just dropped it. Right. And now she wants to do it again. Okay. Dick has talked to her. Do you know when they meet? 
No, but you set up a separate meeting oh, gotcha. with the restaurant, with all the businesses in Rehoboth, mainly the restaurants, hotels, and stuff, mm -hmm. retailers, and in the chamber, a conference room holds, you know, you can get 10 or 15, 20 people in there. And you hold, the host, you hold a meeting, you tell them what you're doing, and before you do it, you outline what you want to, what we're trying to do, whether it be the plastic bag ban or the bottle, eliminating mm -hmm. single use plastic bottles or whatever it is. Then you have one meeting and you get everybody in there instead of right. probably a very efficient use of time because the chamber members, the businesses support the chamber and the chamber supports them. So if you get the chamber behind it and then you talk about, as Charlie said, the pros and cons, you have to have the cons in there. And you can do a thing on pros and cons on it and come up with everything. The pros are going to outweigh the cons. I can tell you that right now. And then you just say this is what it is and, and you present a report so that... Um, so that they can do a panel to come forward with time. We could even ask Plastic Free Delaware if they can do their top dog and pony show for the Chamber of Commerce. Because they have a movie they show and they have, you know, oh. stuff they do. Um, you know. What is Carol's last name? I don't know. Everhart. 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 <laughs> okay. So um, are we doing that before the next meeting? I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to find out. Let me contact Dick and see how he would okay. suggest that we approach okay. Carol in the chamber. Okay. okay. And we'll see if we can't do that as soon as possible. That would be wonderful. And then you can send out an email to Nettie. Yes. Not mm -hmm. all okay. of us. Great. Appreciate that. Great. Well, uh, we've beat ourselves down here pretty well for the last couple of hours. Let's see if we're past the top of the hour. Uh, we've got some future agenda items. C committee members' comments, and we've had a lot of comments from the committee already. Are there any other comments you'd like to share? Yes, Heather. Um, I have one. I, I think I'm on the fringe here with my one extra issue that nobody else had the same issue. So I'm not sure which of these we would put it under, or maybe it's something that you guys don't feel comfortable with, and I should head it up myself. Um, and I think I brought it up last time. My, my two issues were the glyphosate use, and I think we could really do a lot of good stuff in that committee. But my other issue is um, the 5G network. Oh, coming right. soon to a town near you. And, I have um, forgotten about that altogether. Thank yeah, you unfortunately, I can't forget about it. Um, it's number, well, or it was number two, now it's number one. And again, if nobody else, if it's not, doesn't speak to you, it's you don't think it's appropriate for this committee, um, I can certainly, you know, try to come to the town meetings and accomplish something. Well, I'd love so. to hear more about what you know about 5G and electromagnetic forces. I would love to give you guys a little presentation at the next right. meeting. That's what I would like to have. That would be great. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I don't know yeah, enough yes. about it scientifically. Yeah, I don't but, know. Um, I, I, but I am interested. Yes. I mean, and I think it is appropriate. So okay. glad to be educated as well as the God comes I, I think very it's there, there are things in our environment that are affecting our yeah. health, and that's yeah. what I think it's part of. Yeah, so, yeah. we just need to know scientifically. So are you doing that at our next meeting? Is that what you said? Yeah, we're happy to do that. Agenda item. Yeah, okay. Good. And you're still working on getting Kevin Williams to um, address us at some point. <laughs> well, you know, it's looking like a full agenda next time already. Yeah, we plastics ask, is going to take up a lot of time. We should yes. ask Kevin to come in March or yeah. something else. I'll if we want to come out of the meeting with an actual proposal Plan. for the commission, mm -hmm. that, could, that would take up most of the time. I think it will. I think it will, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Ten whole meetings more than once a month. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we can have a whole committee meet more often if need be. Anybody up for that? I can do it's like an inter interim meeting, interim meeting, meeting to work on one. We just have to yeah. give it a seven day notice like we do for this meeting. Yeah, that's what I was well, why thinking. Why don't you guys have an extra plastics meeting? And yeah, I, I think it's a good idea, but you know, it's up to people what they, how much time they want to put in. I think it'd be a good idea too. I think it's just good. once a month. It's not going to happen, and here we are going over our time anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was hoping we could meet as subcommittees, but maybe we have to notice them as well. But. Well, apparently um, we do have to notice them, but we can still say. Can this, they be coffee clashes? It's it's, pla <laughs> it's it's plastic. So if there are people on this committee that feel they don't have much to contribute, then it's not an official committee. Just people who have ideas about plastic, but um, you know. But you still apparently have to note, give the public notice. Yeah. So, I, 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 I thought they said there were some ways around it, though. 
You can never make a plastic subcommittee. And then you could, well, you could do one or two people on the plastics committee could meet, and then they could share it later on. In a, one person. One I person. don't think there's one anything person. really a down, as much of a downside to a public no. going through that, that yeah. other than just slow you down, maybe slow you down, more planning required. But um, you might even get people to come in that have ideas that we haven't thought of if you put it out as a public, public notice. So I think you're proposing that we have another meeting between now and February? I think it's a good idea. I think so. Just, just for, to talk about the plastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody well, okay with that? Yeah. Does, does the middle of the month uh, someplace sound better than other times? There's Friday. Friday's, Friday's, a, good Friday's a good day. Friday's a good day. Friday, that would be the 17th. Is it the 16th? So what you said. That would be the 17th. 17th. Is yeah. this room available? <laughs> in that day when uh, there's not a meeting? Do we have it earlier or later? Or? Do we have to meet here? Mm -hmm. well, no, we don't have to meet in this room. We can meet in another room. Of course, they wouldn't be able to have the same sort of Open. opportunity for people to right. see us from the video cameras that are up there. <laughs> Stan Hill still doesn't watch this last time. So Some people watch it. Be right. careful what you say, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Don't talk about people. That's right. He's a wonderful guy. <laughs> <laughs> and you propose there's another uh, hour where we could uh, get together on that Friday, or should we try for a different day? Can we meet in another room here in the, I mean, there are classrooms and other things that are sufficiently small for a big for us. Pretty, we don't take that much room. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah, we normally do, but I mean, <clears throat> We had a training session here the other day for all of the Evan Millers of the East Coast, and it was in one of the classrooms. It's upstairs. Yeah, that was not. That was not a that, committee. That, you are right. Or a board or a commission meeting. That's correct. It was not. So we should probably meet in this room. If there's not a space, a time available on Friday, January 17th, I'll ask that first. We'll see what you. Okay, budget meeting starts at 10 o'clock in the morning, and that will probably be three, three and a half hours long. Then the special meeting starts at 2.30 in the afternoon, and the regular meeting is at 3. So I really do not suggest that time. That is booked. Yeah. What about the 24th? The next be, Friday. So that would be Friday the that 24th. That gives us two, two weeks. weeks later. Oh. I don't have anything for the 24th. Would you uh, do it on the uh, 16th so that we can accommodate uh, Stuart? 16th of January is a Thursday. In the afternoon of January 16th, Thursday. Does that work? And afternoon, doesn't. I can't do that. That's okay. Yeah. There'll always be someone who can. I, right, but I, was I already have something else I fixed. Oh. All day long. So, yeah, no, no. From 11 to 2.30. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just trying to see. Yeah, that's okay. I don't think we can always make all of them. So. Well, we've got the whole afternoon, it sounds like, we can, on Thursday the 16th. Right. Yeah. Oh, I have the whole day open. I see there. So we could accommodate you as well, Susan. We'd like to have you here. I'm so, okay. If that works with everyone. But I'm just saying it may be every time someone can't make it. So is it 2, just 3 o'clock? Is that better for you or what? For me, 16th it is, doesn't yeah. work for me, but I'll just send my, my thoughts. See, it's the same I can thing, just send so my thoughts just in writing. Go for it. It's my AUW meeting, so. So the 16th yeah. is not good for you the whole time, Mary? Yeah, I have to be somewhere else. Well, is 3 o'clock good for you, Susan? At least, at least we can get you and Stuart in on it. 16th at 3 o'clock? How about, sorry to keep changing, how about the 23rd if we're going for a Thursday? <laughs> 23rd, Thursday. 23rd, open. 23rd. Open. Any particular hour? 
Any objection open. on it? Stuart, you open? open. open. January 23rd? January yep. 23rd, Thursday. That's okay. You want to do 11 o'clock? Do we, don't know if we have Stuart yet. All right. Yay, right. We're here. <laughs> 23rd, 11 o'clock. 23rd, 11 o'clock. We'll have to notice that. Who does that? I you will send an agenda <laughs> to Ann, and Ann will prepare the notice of the meeting talking only about plastics. Plastics. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Extra meetings may get to be too much for everybody at some point, and you'll say, hey, Charlie. I don't yeah. think we need to be yeah. honest. Once a month is yeah. enough. Yeah. Yeah. When they are. If We're just getting much. started. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I'm up for it. 23rd of January, 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then our next rink. Think plastic. Next, next one is February 7th. Which mm -hmm. may involve a lot of plastics, but will also involve some 5G. Mm -hmm. And that'll be at 1 o'clock. Instead one of 11. Oh, the 7th is at 1 o'clock. So it's at 1 o'clock, trusting that's still okay with everybody. Okay. And there's a commissioner's workshop meeting, which is January. It's February 10th. Oh, sorry, February. It's a uh, commissioner's workshop. I believe you're also on the workshop meeting coming up. There's another workshop meeting coming up, but it's on a different topic. Is that not right? On the 6th. On the 6th of January, there's a workshop on what topic? Do you recall? Uh, of course, you're invited to come to the workshops. They may not pertain to the environment. They always have a workshop like about a week before they have their official commit commission meeting every month. It yeah, I think they like to have the workshop first and before they have yeah. votes sense. or anything like that. Yeah. That makes sense. So every month they have have, have votes. Well, Ann may not be finding the January sixth agenda. No, no. Workshop. January sixth presentation by Environment Committee on possible suggestions for environmental issues in the city and ways for the city to implement possible environmental improvement initiatives. January 6th. Three days? Well, <laughs> we're already on their schedule. <laughs> I, I stand corrected. We haven't been invited. <laughs> I maybe have been invited, in which case I'll stand up and say what we've been doing so far, which is working on things. <laughs> well, at least now we have this January 23rd session on plastic that we'll have something yeah. to report mm -hmm. about. Yes, and report about this meeting and Last month as well. Lots yeah. of interest in this topic. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Charlie. And yeah, thank you very okay. much. Anybody wants to come to that and back me up, <laughs> you're welcome to join us. Um, that's that's yes, January 6th. Workshop, that's which is right here at what hour, Ann? 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I'll be there. And anybody else wants to come? So, having had uh, opportunity for our uh, Committee member comments. I've got a next meeting date. Citizen comments. They've already left. Uh, do I entertain a motion for adjournment? So moved. And a second? Second. And all in favor of adjourning, say aye. Aye. And all opposed, say nay. We are now adjourned. It is 1.17 in the afternoon.